Yo, what's happening, y'all? This is B. Drizzle of the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Welcome to the number one LA Clipper podcast out there. We want to first give you guys a shout out, LA Clipper fan, LA Clipper Nation, for being here. Share this podcast with your family and friends. They will not be disappointed, but let's get it popping. Pull up in motor case. I got a show today. It's all I'm trying to do. Hustle and motivate. Choppers to throw away. Hustle to overway. That's why they follow me, huh? They think I know the way. Cause I took control of things. Ball in the solo way. And if you pattern my trend, I make you my protege. Sloss in that soldier race. Niggas don't know them days. Take you in back of the buildings. Make you expose your rage. Take you across the tracks. Make you explode the face. Now you official now. But you got a soul to say. I just been cooking that note. I'm about to drop in the fuel. Think if I call it the grain, the people gon' call it the truth. I ain't really trip on the credit. I just paid all of my dues. I just respected the game. Got my name all in the news. Trippin' on all of my moves. Quote me on this, got a lot more to prove. Remember I came in this bitch. Fresh out the county with nothing to no, lose. Show run around with the paper bag, run around with the paper bag. Going crazy, spending all this cash. Going crazy, spending all this cash. If I spend it, I'ma get it back. Even when I ride around dirty, a nigga don't need a seatbelt. A nigga don't need a seatbelt. Nah, it don't cost to keep it real. Run up, get done up. Shit can get real. Fuck around and get your ass rocked. Nigga, fuck around and take your shit. Got you asking God why. Drag your ass into an alley. Pull out aim for the target. Should've never been around a killer. My town, we the fucking realest. No chatter vibes round here. I get the spray and they gon' get down. Ski mask over my face. Catch a body in broad day. Catch a body in broad day. I got the key to the city. I got a hold of Shadidi. Talk to that bitch in Swahili. Tattoo my name in graffiti. Whack out your hood in graffiti. Come through your hood on the weekly. None of y'all niggas can't see me. None of y'all niggas can't see me. Y'all ain't got nothing like this over there. Bunch of frontline millionaires. Bunch of self made at the trunk bag. It's the odds really took it there. Any prob, I'ma reappear. With a squad, you already fear. All this time, I've been playing fair. Seven digits every single year. Niggas die, niggas disappear. Alibis, I was really there. Life a crime till I get the chair. Columbine in my trigger head. Still I rise and I took the stairs. Feel a fire, it's a different glare. All these fights, it was never fair. Busting up and still I'm swinging fears. Taste the salt inside my dripping tears. You should know I never had a fear. You should know I never had a shot, never had a chance till I took it here. Man, it's proud, but I see it clear. Strategize, Charles, I'm an engineer. Pick a side, gotta keep it there. Switching up, nigga, looking weird. I got the key to the city. I got a hold of Sidney. Talk to that bitch in Swahili. Tattoo my name in graffiti. Whack out your hood in graffiti. Come through your hood on the weekly. None of y'all niggas can't see me. None of y'all niggas can't see me. What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up Show. I'm your host, Mr. BJ Matthews, a.k.a. B. Just before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Like, share, subscribe. All of our YouTube videos, hit that like button. Y'all come in here, hit the share, subscribe, hit that cash app. Dollar sign BJ Matthews, dollar sign BJ Matthews for all this great content. If you guys want to show it to the podcast, make sure you guys go to our cash app and go to our membership badges that are available. If you guys want to, you know, show your love, um, you got three options the pull up badge, the LA Clipper badge, and the interview badge. All have three different perks. Shout out to our man Alan NG for being the newest uh subscriber and the newest uh member of the pull up basketball family. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're getting these members up more and more. So make sure you guys join the movement. And last but not least, if you guys do not have uh, Cash App, you can also go to um, right below the video where it says thanks and drop some love into the super sticker and super comment button by hitting that button to actually hit a comment in the chat box. But let's get it going. Um, let's go into the, you know what I'm saying, the, um, 
let's go into the chat let's go into the chat see what's going on uh sharita ritz said pelicans fans starting to look down on the clippers as number one exit as a fan it hurts a lot please win tomorrow and let them have a straight face yes ma'am yes ma'am appreciate you coming in uh thomas talent and my man sean said somebody tell radar dookie trash ass insider uh sports that sources of Kawhi being out is garbage again i've already exposed that clown um do not you, you guys do not listen to mookie jones man he is a fake fraud he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about he's doing it for clickbait um stop you know worrying about what he's talking about um appreciate my man sean uh d rob was good my guy he said i can't wait for the stream yes sir yes sir janelle santana was good brother he said top salute b joseph thomas aka the talented and this is just a sneak peek of what's to come in the playoffs goes to show Kawhi can go level three anytime he wants pg's night yes sir appreciate you coming in let's look at some of these other comments uh little taste they got a choke ours on the side of him and you say the best duel hell nah hey tell your mama choke on these nuts how about that Mercedes Mayo, A, B, J, and Thomas in the chat. How you doing, Miss Mercedes? Appreciate you coming in. Uh, the realest, a man says, salute BJ and chat. Good win for the seeding, but I care more about the healthy and being and getting and winning against teams. We may see in the playoffs. Go get this win tonight. All right. Uh, sh- all right. So we got 27 people. Let's get these likes up over 27 likes. Um. I'm going to go into um, a number of things today, and I want you to really kind of pay a close attention to um, and sit back and enjoy this because it's going to be a very, very entertaining live. It's going to be a good one. Um, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you smash the like button, hit the share, the subscribe, hit the cash app, all that good stuff, man. Definitely appreciate y'all coming in here. Um, last night, the Clippers were able to prevail um, on the road. First game of the road trip uh, against the Chicago Bulls, 126 to 111. The Bulls uh, fall to 32 and 35. We go to 42 and 23. We are the fourth seed in the Western Conference. I believe we're two and a half games behind the Minnesota Timberwolves in the West. So that's a good sight to see. Um, we do need to get um, some wins under our belt. I think we have 17 games remaining. So we need to go like on probably win 13 out of these 17 games to give a chance to, you know, move up in the top three seed. And, uh, but right now we're in the top four at this point. So uh, we just got to continuously hoping. Um, you know, pray that, you know, we get a chance to get in this top three. If we don't get it, we're going to have to go in as, you know, a four seed um, most likely. So um, let's talk about last night. The Clippers were able to prevail over the Chicago Bulls. I'm going to go through some of these stat sheet and some of the stats, and then we're going to get into the main uh, discussion of the channel, of the title today. So um, let's go with the Chicago Bulls starting off, right? Let's start with their, their, their uh, team right now, the Bulls. Um, we played them just last, I believe, last Saturday. We was able to win at home. Um, so that was a very, very, you know what I'm saying? Telling win. Uh, this is the stat sheet of the Chicago Bulls yesterday. Uh, you got DeMar DeRozan, Torrey Craig, uh, Nikola Vucevic, Alex Caruso, and Ayo, uh, Dasumu. So, you know, the Bulls coming off a of back-to-back, of course, against the Indiana Pacers. Um, you know, they obviously, you know what I'm saying? You know, towards the end of the season, a lot of these teams are ready just for the postseason and hopefully chances to get into the playoffs. So they're not going to be, you know, on every single night. But um, if you look at the statistics right here, um, you know what I'm saying? Guys shooting six for 16, DeMar DeRozan, not a very, very efficient shooting night. Two for five from the three, seven for eight from the free throw line, five rebounds. Uh, Torrey Craig, four for eight from the field, four for seven from the three-point line was pretty, pretty good in the uh, first half. Um Nikola Vucevic, very, very good in the first quarter. Ch- hit their first five points. Um, stretch the, stretches the floor. Um, you know what I'm saying? He can hit, you know, perimeter jump shots. Can, you know, score inside the post. Very, very skilled big man. He was 8 for 14, 2 4 from the three-point line uh, with six rebounds and five assists. Alex Caruso, 36 minutes, 5 for 13 from the field, 5 for 8 from the three-point line. Um, very, very efficient from the three. 2 for 2 from the free throw line. Six, um, six assists, three rebounds. Apologize for having the points cut off, y'all. But um, y'all can see the point. Um, and then Ayo DeSumo, 35 minutes, 2 for 11 from the field. Not a great shooting night um, because of the defense of, you know, we played on him. 1 for 5 from the three-point line and 2 for 2 from the free throw line. So um, we did a great job, I think, defensively, especially in that, uh, what is that, that second quarter. And I think a lot of it had to do with the shot making that we had that really, you know what I'm saying, propelled our defense. When you're making shots, you're going to get energy on the other side. That's just how it goes. When you're missing shots, you tend to, you know, waver back and forth with your energy 
more more times than not, right? So I think the defense that we had last night really propelled our offense to hit shots and continuously made us stay engaged on the defensive end. We've been saying all year long that we do not at times, you know, play discipline on defense. So I thought last night was a great example of that. I thought we played very, very exceptional defense. I thought we pushed the ball. I thought we, you know what I'm saying, got great shots, moved the ball, and uh, just did, you know, great, you know, all around. So the Bulls, like we, you know, pretty much had their their top guys, you know, shooting the ball not that well. Um, Zach Levine obviously is out for the season. Lonzo Ball has been out for two seasons. So those are two valuable pieces to their team. Um, but nonetheless, you know, we was able to, you know what I'm saying, hold them down. Now that takes care of the Bulls. Let's go to the Clippers. Side. Let's go to our bench, man. Let's go to our bench players. Um, you got guys like you know what i'm saying norman powell very efficient from the field six for ten from the field three for six from the three-point line three for four from the free throw line a lot of our guys like i said was very efficient you know what i'm saying very very efficient last night and was able to take advantage of the mismatches and also being able to you know what i'm saying score off of just instinct right norman powell very efficient night I like to see that mere coffee three for eight from the field three for six from the three-point line um very very good night from him you know what i'm saying the shots that he shot were very very you know good shots um he will continuously, you know, be better and better game after game. So I liked what I saw from those two guys as far as the scoring aspect of the game. Those are our two best players off the bench. You had, you know, Brandon Boston get some minutes, Xavier Moon get some minutes. Um, you know, Daniel Tice, of course, is, you know, our solid backup big man at this point since Mason Plumlee's kind of got his, you know, minutes taken away. But um, I, I enjoyed seeing that, you know, getting the scoring that we got mixed in with the defense of intensity. So very, very, you know, pleased to see that. As y'all come in here, smash that like button. As y'all come in here, smash that like. We got 35 people because he likes up. Let's go into some of these. Uh, let's go into some of these comments. Carl, Carson Cos Cassell said, BJ, what people don't realize is what that the game slows down the playoffs and clips are a slow paced team. So that makes it be yeah, exactly. We're gonna get into all this. We're going to get into all this, brother. Uh, Quay Rich said, salute BJ, pull up, family, good win. Yesterday, best basketball I've seen from the Clippers on both sides of the team since before All-Star break. Yes, sir. Right. Um, I appreciate that, man. Appreciate all that. Um, as y'all come in, hit that like button. So that takes care of the role players on the Clippers. Uh, let's go into the uh, starters. Um. You had Zubak, 32 minutes, two for three from the field, eight rebounds, six assists, two defensive rebounds. Um, you know, very, very good game as far as, you know, on the boards for Zubak. Um, I thought defensively Nikola Vucevic kind of, you know, won that matchup, but I think Zubak, again, uh, did what he was supposed to do, hold his, four, hold his weight down. Um, you know what I'm saying? Control the control the glass. We need to control the glass. Let me see if he got out-rebounded. He didn't get out rebounded by Vucevic, so that's good. Um, you know, that's what we can ask for from Zubak. Control the glass, protect the rim. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Be efficient from the field. When you get your shots, you're going to make them. Um, that's all we can ask for from Zubak. So I think that he had a very, very solid game. Terrence Mann, 4 for 13 from the field, 2 for 7 from the three-point line, um, 2 for 2 from the free throw. So not a very, very good shooting game from Terrence Mann, but for some reason last night, it, to me, it didn't really matter that T-Man had a very, very off shooting night. He's been having games like that in the past. He's had some great shooting games in the past. But it's about next play mentality with Terrence Mann. Next play, next play, next play. That's the mentality that Terrence Mann, um, I, I'm starting to see is capturing. He missed his first five shots last night, but he still was able to, you know, I could tell with his body language. He didn't let that affect him on defense, and he was eventually was able to, you know what I'm saying, keep being aggressive. So I liked all that from Terrence Mann last night outside of the, you know, um, Field goal percentage shooting. Uh, Bones Highland, six for nine from the field, uh, 17 points, four for seven from the three point line, one for two from the free throw line, uh, five rebounds, five, five defense rebounds, and 11 assists. Uh, we're going to talk about Bones in a minute about his performance. And then, of course, our big dogs, PG and Kawhi, 35, 34 minutes apiece. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, 12 for 17 from the field, PG, 11 for 12, uh, six for seven from the three point line, two for five from the three point line, uh, seven assists for PG with five rebounds. Uh, three assists for uh, Kawhi with uh, five rebounds as well. Um, both had what Kawhi had 27 and PG had 28. So we're going to get into that as well. And I'm going to get into a lot of different things, but that takes care of the game. We basically put, put the hammer onto the Chicago Bulls. We got the New Orleans Pelicans tonight. Um, and a back to back, we got to take care of business. Um, 
I'm pretty sure they got in to New Orleans probably around 2, 2 a.m. last night. So um, this is a game where they're going to have to, you know what I'm saying, uh, come with the same same focus. Because it's going to be a game where, you know, we're probably going to need some of our depth to kind of help us out. Right. But I expect our stars to, you know, come out and still play how they're supposed to play. But let's talk about some of the keys last night. Um, Bones, Bones Highland, 17 points, four assists, four threes, 11 assists. As y'all come in here, smash that like button. But I'll come in and smash that like button. So busy, um, obviously has had some struggles um, this season. Actually, nah, my fault. Not just this season. Pretty much since he's been in the league, right? This is Bones' third season in the NBA. He spent his two first two seasons with the Denver Nuggets. Um, I seen his first season with the Denver Nuggets, and then last year he got traded at the trade deadline from Denver. Um, Bones obviously he's had to sacrifice um playing time he's had to sacrifice you know his his role from being the you know starting point guard and playing heavy minutes in the uh rotation earlier this season to now being a bench player because you know James Harden since the James Harden trade and you know of course Russell Westbrook's playing behind him we kind of see that you know Bones has had to you know what I'm saying kind of learn um to weigh his turn you know, he went through it in Denver with Jamal Murray. He felt like he should have been more into the rotation, more involved. And, you know, he gets to trade to the Clippers. You know, he gets onto the team. Uh, the, the front office really takes a liking to him. Lawrence Frank really enjoyed watching him, especially when he was getting drafted. That was one of the guys that they really kept a close eye on. So Bones has been a very, very integral piece as far as, you know, what I'm saying, um, you know, the Clippers plans in the future. Right. So. Bones earlier this year, getting playing time, getting into the rotation, playing heavy minutes, finally feel like he's going to be in a, a spot where he could call his home. And then James Harden comes onto the scene and we get him and they trade uh, for Robert Covington, Marcus Morris, Nicholas Patum, K KJ Martin. Y'all know the rest. And since then, Bones ain't really been touching the floor. Um, he was benched, according to, you know, Ty Lue publicly, which I thought was, you know, out of bounds. But um Bones has had to, you know, you know, really adjust himself this season. So what happens recently? Russell Westbrook gets a hand injury. Um, from right now, what I'm hearing that he's still um, they're still kind of, you know, looking to see how possibly long he's going to be out to. It's a, it's a good possibility. He may not come back for the regular season. It's a very, very strong possibility. They're going to try to get him in that first round of the postseason. But what they're doing is they're trying to actually see how this team plays without Russell Westbrook. Because, again, Russ ain't been somebody that misses games. So we ain't really got a chance to really see what he's like, him not on the court. So this is a this is what goes into having opportunities that you take advantage of. That's what that's what the NBA is. That's what that's what any basketball level is. When you have a person in front of you who can, you know, get hurt or lose their spot, you always have to be ready. So now that Russ has been out. We're able to see Bones get back into the rotation more. We're able to see Bones be the primary ball handler with Kawhi and PG. We're able to see Bones, how he runs the team in um, certain situations, right? So that's what we've seen with Bones Highland, right? So Bones, to me, when I watch Bones play, especially last night, Bones is like a, a more controlled version of Russell Westbrook. He's like Russell Westbrook without the turnovers. And, and he has the three-point shot making. Very skilled, very fast, can stretch the floor, shoot the three, very elusive, very good floor general. And something he said also before, um, he said that he people, people mistake him as just like a scorer. But he also can, you know, be a point guard and a floor general. I saw that last night. I saw that in depth. I've been seeing that really since VCU, since he went to college. But people think of him just as a scorer, and that's that's far from the truth. Um, he's very tough-minded as well. Um, been through a lot in his life. Had family members die, um, you know, in front of him. You know, the man's seen a lot of stuff. So really, when you think of somebody like that, he don't really have much to lose and really nothing can really phase him. So it's just ironic that now we've seen Harden and Westbrook 
kind of forcefully now being removed from the rotation and Bones is right there to take that take that position. So tonight, I think I'm, I don't know if Harden's playing tonight. Um, Ty Lue said that hopefully he'll be ready. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'd rather see Bones play again tonight and him start just like last night. He's 23 years old. He's still young. He's not going to really be affected by this back-to-back. -back. He's ready to play. He's been sitting down long enough. He's energetic. He's ready to go. I want to see Bones get another start tonight. I want to see Bones run the team tonight. If he goes out there and he does what he did against Chicago to New Orleans, I want to see him again against Atlanta. And just keep the momentum going until we see something that we don't really, we say, okay, we've seen enough. So I was very, very pleased to see that last night from Bones. He also, also is playing some good defense. That was the one, that's the one thing with Bones that I always said he has to improve. It's going to be, it has to be, if he really wants to take that step up, he's going to have to be more of a two-way um, defensive guy. Right? And I think he has the, the work ethic to do. I think you could tell Bones wants to get better. You could tell Bones wants to play and get high minutes. Like, people were judging him off of trash minutes. You know, him playing the last few minutes against Washington, playing the last few minutes against, you know what I'm saying, these 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 teams. Like, he, by, by that time, Bones ain't even checked in. So you, you, you bench him earlier this year, and then you put him in trash time. Man already don't he, – he already checked out. He don't want to play. But now that you give him time on the court, you let him start, you give him, you know what I'm saying, you know, the, the okay, the green light, then this is, what, this is what can happen. Chicago has good defenders. Alex Caruso is a good defender. Torrey Craig is a good defender. Ayo DeSumo is a good defender. So he ain't like he going up against bums. Tonight, if he starts, he's going to go up against Jose Alvarado. Right? which I think Bones can take advantage of that matchup. He also has a very, very good post game. He's not small. He's 6'3". He's like, he's an inch taller than me. He's not a small dude. Maybe by other standards of, you know, the regular human being, you know, but as far as the NBA, but as regular, like a regular person, he's not small at all. He's a, he's a very, very stout, um, big shoulders, you know what I'm saying? You know, low-key strong in the post, you know? So shout out to Bones, man. Shout out to Bones. Uh, let me go into the chat. Corey Gear, what's up, my brother? He said, I think Bones, T-Man, and Coffee can impact the team success going forward. Uh, yeah, Coffee's definitely, and T-Man are definitely true. And, um, like I said, I just want to see Bones, you know, get more reps in, um, more in situations. Um, so I, I like what I saw. Salute to my person. Eloquence is key. What's up, y'all? Y'all hit the like buttons. Y'all come in here. Y'all hit the like buttons. Y'all come in here. So that takes care of Bones Highland. Let's go into um, let's go into the to the main topic, and it's gonna be um, Kawhi and Paul George will be the best duo in the playoffs. Okay. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to what I'm telling y'all. Okay, I want y'all to really sit back and listen to what I'm telling y'all. Because, again, it's going to erase a lot of these narratives once again. Now, we, know, we both know, we all know the season is different from the regular, the regular season is different from the playoffs. We all know that. There's a lot of great duos in the NBA. A lot of great duos around the league that you can look at. You know, what I mean, you can look at a lot of duos, especially in the Western Conference, that people feel like their duo is the best, and that, that's that's their right, right? So, basketball for me, I look at it like this: there's three different. Well, there's a lot of different, you know, entities to see what makes a person the best duo, especially in the postseason, which we are judging the Clippers as far as I'm concerned. People are judging the Clippers by the postseason, correct? 
as we were judging the, the Clippers by. That's why I keep hearing from all the, you know, Clipper haters and all the people, you know, who are Clipper fans want to see what they do in the postseason, right? Not the regular season. So we're going to talk about the postseason. We're going to talk about the Clippers in the postseason. We're going to talk about the Clippers in the postseason with Kawhi and Paul George, not without Kawhi, not without Paul George, not without either or. We're going to talk about them together. That's how we're going to do this. Because, see, people like to try to take bits and pieces of the situation and make it the entire truth. Oh, the Clippers ain't did shit in four years. The Clippers ain't won a championship in four years. They ain't done nothing. Right, right, okay. Why? Why? What, what has been the main integral piece that people keep saying the Clippers need to do, all they need to do? They have everything. What's the one thing people always tell Clipper fans and Clipper people that all they need to do is what? Be healthy. That's what we was hearing after 2021, 2022, 2023. That's all we kept hearing, that these two need to be healthy. If they are healthy, they are a problem. I got news for y'all. And healthy Kawhi Leonard and Paul George means problems in the NBA. I'm going to prove it. The only way we can really determine and actually really What's the word? Support that is that I give y'all images on the screen so y'all can see um, what's really going on. Now, the last time these two were in the postseason together was obviously in 2021. I remember it was like it was yesterday. It was games three and four against the Utah Jazz. We were down. We were we were down two games to zero in the 2021 postseason. We had to win two desperate games back in L.A. Donovan Mitchell was playing out of his mind. The Utah Jazz had the momentum. They were number one seed that season. A lot of team, a lot of people were starting to ride the Utah Jazz wagon. As y'all come in here, smash that like button. So they go back home. The Clippers lose the first games in Utah. First two games in Utah, they come back home. This is what happens. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George combined for 65 as Clippers blow out Jazz for crucial game three win. I remember they beat their ass by 20 points. Donovan Mitchell was in, in jail. Mike Conley was in jail. Right? They combined for 65 points, 30 points apiece, at least. Dominant performances on both ends of the basketball. This is in the postseason. We'll be judging... Kawhi, Paul, George, we're judging the Clippers. This is the postseason. I'm not showing y'all regular. I'm showing y'all postseason. That was game three, okay? Well, they get game three out the way. They still got to win another game in L.A. to tie the series up. What happens? Game four happens. Kawhi and PG both go for 31. They tie the series with the Jazz. Let's read together. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George each score 31 points. The second straight game they have both. Not one, both had over 30 points. And the Los Angeles Clippers defeat the Utah Jazz 118 to 104 in game four Monday night to even their Western Conference second round series at two games apiece. As y'all come in here, smash the like button. So those are the last two times we saw Kawhi and PG together healthy in the postseason. Together. We know what happens the rest of the series. PG goes for 37 and 16 and in game five win. They win game six um, back in L.A. They go to the conference finals for the first time. PG leads all categories in the Western Conference. Um, points, minutes, second and three point uh, made, scored 20 points every game, led the Clippers to their first ever Western Conference finals. We saw the story. That was that year. The next season, uh, obviously, Kawhi Leonard, you know, missed the entire season with the tail with ACL. Uh, PG leads them to the, you know, uh, the playoffs, the play-in, um, without Kawhi Leonard being there, and basically they were able to get as a seventh seed. Um, the year after that, which was last year, obviously uh, PG gets hurt. You know, early, you know, what I'm saying by I think in March he doesn't he doesn't come back. It's Kawhi Leonard's team now in the Western Conference uh, in the first round against Phoenix. 
Um, he 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 uh, splits one of the two games, dominant against Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. You know what I'm saying? Had he was able to stay in that game, I believe the the uh, the Clippers would have won that series, right? And even without Kawhi, when Kawhi gets gets down, they make every single game against Phoenix Suns very very competitive. Games three, four, and five, led by Russell Westbrook and Norman Powell. Um, Russ going for thirty. Right. And this is going to tie into why I say that all this is going to come down to is us coaching and putting out the right people. And we're going to beat everybody's ass. Y'all smash the light bunch. I'll come in. Now, let's focus on Kawhi and PG. The reason why I say I focus on these two is because the postseason is about stars. It's not about the role players. It's not about it's not about the the, the equipment managers, it's not about the water boys, it's not about the towel boys, it's not about it's about your star players and how they come to play. Yes, role players do make somewhat of a difference, but again, without your stars, you have no chance. Without one of your stars, your chances go down extremely, especially in this NBA, where most of these teams have two or three different stars. So basically what's been happening the last three seasons, when a hater comes up in you and tells you the Clippers ain't done shit, make sure you tell them that the Clippers have been getting jumped from behind the last three seasons. Whether that be injuries, whether that be one of the guys not being there, it's a very, very unfortunate situation, but the truth is the truth. If you're going to tell me the Clippers ain't done something, I'm going to tell you what's the reason why. Right? You got a head start in the race and you tend to beat me on a hundred yard meter dash, but you got a 50 yard head start. You whooped my ass, but it was three against one. You don't get no brownie points for that. Now that these guys look like they're going to be healthy for the postseason. Let's see, let's see somebody try to sneak behind them now. I know what y'all gonna say, the bubble, right? That's right. <sighs> yes, the Clippers gave up a 3-1 lead to the Denver Nuggets. Yes, the Clippers had um a downfall in the bubble. Yes, that was very true. That happened. Um, I'm not denying that at all. I'm not going to ever deny um, a player or two players having a bad moment. I'm not. Just like y'all shouldn't deny when Magic Johnson missed two free throws and lost the series to the point where it was so bad they called him Tragic Johnson. Just like when Kobe Bryant, who was my favorite player of all time, in the 2007 playoffs against the Phoenix Suns, refused to shoot the ball in Game 7 because he got tired of being called a ball hog. Or in, in 2004 against the Pistons when my man Kobe averaged, if I'm not mistaken, 17 points. Or is it, what was it? I think it was 17 or 20 points he averaged that se in that series against the Pistons. They get gentlemen swept. That's one of the biggest marks on Kobe Bryant's career. Just like LeBron James had an entire bad series in game in 2011 against the Miami Heat where the man averaged a whopping 17 points per game. It had eight points. In game, was it game three? Right? And I can go on and on. In the postseason, these are all postseason moments of some of our best players of all time. Cool guys that we consider top 10. So if you're considering those guys top 10, you think a player who's not a top 10 player isn't capable of having a bad moment? or a bad situation, it happens. It happens. Now, as y'all smash the button and smash the like button, we're going to get to something very, very important as well. Um, like I said, man, 
Kawhi and Paul George healthy in the postseason means problems. And we're going to see that this year. There's going to be a lot of people whose jaws are going to drop this year come June. There's contracts on the line. There's legacies on the line. Um, there's going to be a lot of shit that's going to be exposed this year. <clears throat> Now, when I say they're the best duo in the playoffs, you're going to have some people you disagree, and that's fine. That's very, that's perfectly fine. In the Western Conference, who you got? You got Steph and Clay Thompson. Um, first of all, being part of a duo, let me, let me explain to y'all what makes a, the best duo in my eyes. What y'all saw last night, was a display of what y'all will see in the postseason. What y'all saw last night is the last time they were together, what y'all saw in front of y'all eyes. Pure domination on both ends of the basketball, right? I keep telling people basketball is a two-way sport, not a one-way sport. And once you cover both sides of the basketball, how are you not the best duo in the NBA? How are you not the best duo in the West when you cover both ends? There's only two ways to play basketball, offense and defense. There's a few reasons. There's a few things that you look at when you talk about the best duo. Two guys. Now, it's a five man sport, which I believe the Clippers have the best team. Um. That's going to support why I believe that you will see Kawhi and PG as the two best, the best duo in the postseason. One, you got to look at the scoring and shot making. Look, playoff basketball, shout out to the, to the guy who just said it. Playoff basketball slows down to half court setting. These are two guys who live, eat, breathe in the half court setting. This is the difference between regular season in postseason when you guys got young teams who play 82 games they want to get out and run and you know play behind the crowd and do all that what you're going to do when it gets to a series when the game slows down it becomes more physical the refs allow a little bit more physicality the experience the scoring and shot making aspects a very very huge aspect when it comes to playoff basketball some of our Favorite players, that's where they thrive at. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, um, Kevin Durant, uh, Devin Booker, um, Kawhi, of course, PG, Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray is another person shot making I'm going to talk about in a minute. Shot making and scoring in a half-court setting demoralizes the opposing teams. How many shots can you make in a row back-to-back -to, -back to take guys out their rhythm to the point they're thinking to themselves, we can't stop these two. Kawhi Leonard shot over 70% from the field. PG shot over 90% from the field last night. PG is the only person next to Nikola Jokic to have the shot, to have the to have the um the stat line he did shooting over 90% last night. That was Paul, that was Paul George. 28, 28 points, seven assists, five rebounds, one steal, one block, 11 for 12 from the field. He joins Nicole Jokic, the only two players in NBA history with that line or better, or at least 90% shooting in the game. Kawhi and Paul George in the first half, 31 points, nine rebounds, five assists, two blocks, one steal, 14 for 17 from the field, three for five from the three-point line. This is the most efficient I've seen Kawhi and PG ever play together. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to get into that in a minute. But back to the point. Kawhi and PG are shot makers. They're going to demoralize you with the shot making. You're not going to do anything but hope they miss shots. That's all you're gonna do. You got a six-seven beast inside in the mid post 
who's stronger than anybody at that position, probably outside of LeBron. Probably that's the only person that's going to, you know, at least give him somewhat of a fight. But nobody's going to be able to really do nothing with him in the mid post. Elbow. Highly efficient player. Paul George. He's taller than anybody that really guards him at his position. Last night, Alex Caruso, shoot him right over the top of him, take him into the post. Ayo Dasumo, too small. DeMar DeRozan, too small. Probably the only person that really gives him, who's going to give him a you know fighting chance is probably Jaden McDaniels. But even with him, when it's an offensive player is going to always, if you're a great offensive player, it's going to beat great defense. The only thing that you can really do is just make like try to make them shoot more shots and be inefficient. But they're going to get their 20, 25 points no matter how great of a defender you are. It's just about you making it tough. So the scoring aspect in half and playoff basketball is crucial. Not the transition play, not, you know, all that shit. It's about give me the ball, especially in one-on-one -on -one actions. Give me the ball. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to take you mono e mono. And these two are masters at that. One guy's extremely physical and efficient. The other guy's are very extremely skilled and lengthy. Similar but different but can kill you in the same way. That's what you need in basketball. You need somebody that's going to be able to do that. Every great team has a score, right? You look at or a score and a shooter in a half court, right? Last year was Jamal Murray for the Nuggets. That's why when Nicole Jokic is by himself, he takes his, he takes his ass home in the first round. Did y'all forget that? Against the Suns, he gets swept in four games in a row against the Warriors. He gets gentlemen swept four to one. So where's all this dominance when Nicole Delkis don't have Jamal Murray? It's because the shot making is a vital piece when it comes to half court basketball. Steph Curry, another one shot making in 2022 in the finals. Chris Middleton with Giannis as great as Giannis is. He understands that he needs another guy in the half court to score for him. That's why he got Damian Lillard. Right. The shot making aspect and the one on one aspect to break break matchups down is what separates the good from the great. But then you got to go to the other side on defense. And this is the and see, this is the thing people keep forgetting. This is a two way sport. A lot of us looks at offense and think that's just the end all be all. No, 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 no. The great players, the best players play both ways of the goddamn basketball. Not one. They play both ways. Jordan, Kobe, LeBron in his heyday, Kawhi, um, Giannis right now. The best players play both ways of the basketball. They can control more on the court. Vice versa, a guy getting up a bunch of shots who it looks pretty, a la Luka Doncic, right? His offense looks great, but he takes his ass home early in the playoffs because he doesn't affect the other side of the court. Steph Curry, for great as he is, he needs assistance or else he looks like missing the play in. He looks like how he's looking now. There's certain guys, no matter what you put around them, they're not missing no play-ins. They're not missing the playoffs, which is something Kawhi and Paul George never have done separately. They have never missed the postseason, no matter what team they've been on. But the defensive aspect in basketball today, I don't know. It's, people are allergic to talking about I don't understand why. but People don't like to talk about defense anymore. 
So while I'm kicking your ass on the offensive side of the ball, I'm also demoralizing you on the defensive side of the ball. Let me tell you something. When this postseason comes around, it's no more we got to, you know, Kawhi and PG know what time it is when it comes to postseason. This means now we're not taking, we're not switching screens. We're not, we're not taking plays off. We're fighting, we're fighting through screens. We're demoralizing people, smaller guards at our position. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Donovan Mitchell, you don't get shit. Devin Booker, you don't get shit. Luka Doncic, you're not getting shit on Kawhi Leonard when it comes time to, time to ball. Y'all not getting shit. That's what defense is. Defense wins. Smash the light bunch. I'll come in here. I'll let y'all in a minute. So when I look around the league and I talk about and I look in the Western Conference, Steph and Clay, as y'all know, Clay's on his last legs. Clay's no longer the guy that you can call the Splash Brother anymore. Had a great run, four championships, dynasty, well respected around the league, sharp shooter, one of the, probably the best, probably one of the top five shooters that we've ever seen. Steph is already, of course, the best shooter. But as y'all can see, without Clay, his, shooter, his sharp shooter, Steph is struggling to get his team out to play in. Their impact is not going to be felt enough for them to carry the Warriors to anything. Well, I take that back. They're still a championship caliber team. So against certain teams, they can still get a run. But they're no longer, quote, quote, unquote, a duo anymore. They're trying to find that second guy for Steph. So I'm not putting them over Kawhi and Paul George. Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, this is a fun one. Of course, we've seen Ingram and Zion be two guys who, in my opinion, go a lot off of, you know, they're, how can I put it? The postseason is going to show the difference between these two and Kawhi and Paul George. B.I. was a guy on the on the court for a long time. You know, people looked at him as, for all tests and purposes, another Kevin Durant, like a like a, a, a lower version of KD. Very good shot maker. Who can shoot the three? Who can shoot in the mid range? Very tall, very lengthy. But where is his postseason success? Where is where is Brandon Ingram's postseason success? Where is Zion Williamson's postseason success? Now, of course, their games are very dominant. I think Zion's very dominant. But like I said, when it comes to the postseason, especially. You need shot makers. And they got one shot maker in B.I. Zion Williams ain't no damn shot maker. He's a guy that's going to go to the rim, put his head down, and look to actually, you know, dominate. But once you learn how to guard Zion Williamson, which is beat him to the spot, like LeBron James does, he's limited. He doesn't have the skill set. In the playoff, skills wins. Shot making wins. You can only do so much scoring and looking for two point shots within five to ten feet. You can't shoot three point shots. Your free throw percentage is very, very iffy. There's a lot of flaws there. So, no, I ain't putting them over Kawhi and Paul George either. Hell no. Kyrie and Luka Doncic. Offense, no defense. All offense, no defense. Again, this is why I keep telling y'all, Luka Doncic will never be the best player in the NBA. And, and let me tell you something else. 
after Luka Doncic goes through his little drought this year and he gets eliminated somewhere in the first, second, or even in the play-in, we need to start giving him some more criticism. Because what I kept hearing from a lot of these people saying that Luka Doncic just needs a second star, he gets a second star. Not only does they miss the play-in last year, they missed the play, they missed the playoffs, missed the play-in. All right, that's the first season that they have together. Now you have had a full year with this man, Kyrie Irving, next to you. And y'all still in the play-in. So something's going on. And what I'm also seeing too is the style of play of Luka Doncic somewhat holds his teammates back. Kyrie Irving is a, is a great talent. He's 6'2", below average defender, don't have the physical size to compete or not the physical size to guard a Kawhi and Paul George. See, you guys, y'all might be two guys that we have to, you know what I'm saying, really work to guard, but y'all have no chance in hell to guard Kawhi and Paul George on the other end. No chance. No chance. That's going to be so many mismatches on the court against Dallas. I heard somebody say Dallas is going to be a. I don't. I don't even, I'm tired of seeing Dallas face the Clippers and Clippers just sending them home, and they be giving the the Mavericks chances with the Ty Lue and Doc Rivers coaching. They give them chances to be in the series, and they still can't capitalize. So I ain't worried about no damn Dallas. Uh, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. <laughs> hey man. All I'm going to say is PG and Devin Booker, y'all seen that before already. I already seen that. And I and I want to thank Devin Booker for waking Paul George up because, see, uh, a lot of times people think that that was going to make him fold or something. That was going to make him less focused. But all it did was make him more focused and the – First two meetings, PG has pretty much destroyed Devin Booker. He destroyed him in the playoff. He just didn't have his, he didn't have Kawhi next to him. They would have beat the Suns that year. And they would have beat him last year if PG was present. But Devin Booker and Paul George, again, Paul George, there's Devin Booker has no answer for him on the defensive end. And on the offensive end, Paul George, mildly mind against Devin Booker, I've seen give give him fits. So there's nothing that he just he just can't do anything with that matchup. And then Kawhi and Kevin Durant, um, once again, there's three players that Kawhi Leonard always has it out for. That's Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Luka Doncic. He just he just looks at those three guys as people in his way. So when the, when that postseason comes and Kawhi Leonard has to deal with Kevin Durant, Kevin has to deal with Kawhi Leonard, y'all be the judge of what's going to happen with that matchup. And again, the, I know this is a five-on-five five sport, but – like I said, the stars are what wins playoffs. They, so we have to focus on the stars and the star power. So, no, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, no. DeMontis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. Now, it's kind of hard to do this one off the fact that one's a center. And one's a point guard, but again, these are the two best players. So we have to kind of put it there. There's soccer mills, that's that's their duo. So again, their offense, soccer mills offense is potent. Very, very potent. They know how to move without the ball, they know how to set screens, they know how to move, you know what I'm saying, cutters and stuff like that. DeMontis Sabonis is probably the best, the second best big in the Western Conference. Yes, I said that the second best big. His ability, he knows how to play basketball. De'Aaron Fox is somebody that I was big on two, three years ago. I said he was better than John Morant when everybody was on the John Morant train. Very familiar with D-Fox. But again, offense, no defense. Who's going to stop Kawhi and Paul George on the other side? Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes. Oh, Keegan Murray. That's right. Keegan Murray's going to do it. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. In the, again, this is playoff postseason basketball. Okay. 
these two have dealt with the best defenders you can ask for against them. And you think, I don't see nobody. They're going to, they're going to allow somebody who's not at that level to, you know what I'm saying? Have anything to say about it. Like I said, legacies are on the line. Contracts are on the line. That makes it that more um, serious of a, of a situation. LeBron Anthony Davis. Now this one right here, I got a few more. I'm gonna let y'all in. They have played the best they've played against the Clippers the last three seasons, and all of a sudden, they're somehow gonna beat this team. But what's funny is when we were whooping their ass for three years straight, everyone kept saying it was the regular season. Now everyone's saying that the Lakers can beat the Clippers with the same argument we've been using for the last three years. So when we can, when we sweep them over and over two years in a row, go 11 and 0 against them before you get a loss, get an L, it was all just a regular season. Now, since the Lakers got a few wins with certain circumstances, guys being out, guys like Paul George fouling out in the first game after he's, he was cooking the entire Laker team, Kawhi Leonard, you know what I'm saying, um, sitting out the last five minutes of the second game. So now all of a sudden that the Lakers are taking advantage of just winning a few games. An old-ass LeBron James, who's 38 years old or 39 years old, and Anthony Davis, who really never does, when you look at his entire history against the against the Clippers with this team, he ain't really had no dominant performances against us. I don't the the duo of this two this duo again. If there was so, there's no. And you want to talk about consistency? These dudes are on the on the bottom. They they win a game, they lose a game, they win a game, they lose a game. But but somehow because they was able to take advantage of a Western Conference last year with guys like John Moran who dealt with what he dealt with last year and guys being out and dealing with the Warriors team where the Lakers got forty fucking free throws in a game. They're somehow going to outplay. These two in the, in the I don't see it because every time these two go up against the Lakers, for the most part, they destroy them. Nah, I ain't seen that. Last two, Chet Holmgren and SGA. <laughs> so this is the big story. This is the these are the new kids on the block. These are the guys that's going to. Um, these are the guys that's going to somehow uh I guess people are concerned saying they're gonna put they're gonna somehow put teams out and stuff like that. Look, um OKC um SGA to me is probably top two in MVP right now. SGA has taken that team and that coaching has really, really elevated under SGA. Um he's allowed SGA to be himself and take advantage of the matchups that he has in front of him. Chet Holmgren, who's a second year player, um, but considered a rookie, um, very skilled, very tall, very lengthy, can shoot the three point shot. He's a mismatch for a lot of players. He's a mismatch for our big Zubak, Vizca Zubak. Um, so let's say we get a chance to face the Thunder. That will be a situation where Chet Holmgren will have to be dealing with Kawhi Leonard So y'all be the judge on that. You guys seen Chet Holmgren doing anything with Kawhi in the postseason? In the postseason, not the regular season. I said the postseason. I doubt it. SGA and PG, for whatever reason, people think that because SGA finally cracked the code after his sixth season in the NBA, that he somehow is a guy that's an anomaly. That he's somehow a guy that, you know, just is the best thing since sliced bread. 
as I've explained to y'all a couple of weeks ago on a ch on a live, I think it was with me and Rick, SGA is trying to catch up. He's 25 years old. What he's doing right now is what he should be doing. Paul George was doing that his third season. Paul George was going to the conference finals his third season back to back. PG wasn't missing the postseason, no matter what team you put him on. I seen PG guard SGA. SGA can't do can't can cannot can't score on him. On the other side, though, you put SGA on Paul George. Guy who's taller than him, more athletic than him, stronger than him, can shoot over the top of him. That's a that's what we call a mismatch. Oklahoma City is a young team, very exciting to watch. But you're talking about two guys that are on a mission this season. And I doubt they're going to allow some kids get in the way of business. And the last dude we're gonna talk about Jamal Murray and Nicole Jokic. So this is the this is the team that's the savior. This is the team that a lot of haters are, are hoping and wishing the Clippers run into and, and get eliminated and get exposed, right? And the one thing they're gonna to go to is that bubble. That's what they're gonna to go to. Like I said, that's the one scratch that we are not able to reach until June. The Clippers lose a 3-1 lead to the Nuggets. That's exactly what happened. Okay. We've already discussed that in the past. I'm going to let y'all in a few minutes. We've already discussed this in the past, what happened in that series. Um, in that whole situation, it's well documented. And I'm not saying this to take credit away from Denver, but that same 3-1 lead we gave up, we were up three games. So we didn't get swept. We didn't get outclassed outmatched those same three games we won um easily had one more game to win so it didn't come down to like one team was just so much better than the other just like how the okc thunder with kevin durant choked a 3 one lead to golden state warriors that okc team was better than the warriors in 2016. the warriors just had the execution the plan to actually um to stay resilient in the championship experience to, to come back from it. 3-1 leads happen. 2-0 leads happen. Um, it's happened all throughout history. Got, teams have given up 3-1 leads. Denver with Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. The big, the big question is going to be who's going to be the best player in this series. Nikola Jokic is probably one of the greatest regular season players I've ever seen. As far as the statistics go. He he did historic things in the postseason last year. In that same breath, I saw him go home two years in a row to the point where people were complaining, saying that he had no help. But that same help was on his team last year. I'm talking about Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr. A lot of those guys were, were there last year. Some of those guys were in the bubble. I saw that with Nikola Jokic. I seen PG and Kawhi both by themselves. No matter what team you have, they're not getting swept. Unless PG goes against LeBron. They're not they're not getting swept in series against Devin Booker and Chris Paul. They're not getting swept against these guys, man. Jamal Murray great is a is a Guy that you need in the postseason. That's who Nicole Jokic needs. Very similar to Giannis needs Dame Lillard to at least have a chance and not get put out in the first round. Shot makers. Denver has one. Clippers have two.
when the Clippers face the Nuggets this year, if that happens, which I'm hoping it does, y'all going to see what should have happened in 2020. Y'all going to see what really should have happened. Well documented guys in the Clippers didn't want to be there. Lou Williams obviously was going through a death. People talk about the, the lemon pepper stuff. The dude was in Atlanta because he had a death in the family. Patrick Beverly had a death in the family. Montrezl Hill had a death in the family. I have a source that said Kawhi Leonard told a person I know personally said he have no idea what it's like to be in the bubble. He didn't want to be there. Paul George, I saw he was vocal about it. he didn't want to be there. So respect to Denver for taking care of business. But if you guys think that that bubble is going to define what's going to happen when the circumstances are completely different, guys are at home, guys are in their own uh, their houses, they're not being consumed in a bubble. If you guys think that's going to be the same results, sadly mistaken. One thing I want to say, last thing I'm going to let y'all in, promise. I want to be very clear about something. These two guys are very similar but very different. Postseason statistics, very similar. There's certain things that one does, God does better than the other. Kawhi Leonard, as you guys know, more efficient, better from the field, better winning percentage, smarter, better IQ. Paul George, more skilled, better athlete. Better one-on-one -on -one player, create separation better. Better, better when it comes to shot making in the clutch, as far as last second shot making. Very both elite two-way players. What I'm saying is this is going to be a partnership in the playoffs. It's not going to be Kawhi Leonard carrying and Paul George ain't going to be nowhere to be around. That's not what it's going to be. You see it in the numbers. You saw it when they last played with each other. This ain't going to be no Kawhi does his and then Paul George is just going to be around. That, that, that's not what's going to happen. That's not what's going to happen. This is going to be a partnership. Certain people are starting to see PG had he shot 91% from the field last night. People are starting to see exactly what I'm kind of talking about when I say that James Harden has taken away from Paul George's. I want to say effectiveness. These are just two comments, but there's more comments to go. Last night was the only game James Harden didn't play with the Clippers. And all of a sudden, this guy shoots 90% from the field. All of a sudden, Kawhi Leonard shoots 71% from the field. I said this two games ago. I said, y'all are blaming a guy who didn't even, was standing in the corner, not even getting the fucking ball. Same thing Doc Rivers tried to do, try to make him play like a J.J. Redick and Ray Allen, which is not his game, trying to use him as a guy in the corner. I don't know why he did that shit, but he did it. He said it on all the smoke podcasts, I can do it, but that's not my game. And it's not. He needs more. He needs. He needs. He needs more different type of actions. He needs to touch the ball. James Harden bringing the ball up every time, stagnant, holding holding the ball, holding the offense up. 
and guys are just falling asleep. Bones, I like what Bones said in post game yesterday. My job was to get the ball to Kawhi and Paul George. That's my job. Not to dribble a fucking 20 times in between my legs and shoot a step back. Kawhi and PG eat first. The rest of you niggas get in where y'all fit in. And that's what you'll see in the postseason. These guys will get up 20 shots a game. 15 to 20 shots. They will lock up on the other side. That's what will happen. Forty six percent from the field. That's what PG shooting right now. He's his career is forty three point nine from the field. See, a lot, that's another thing I want to say too. this inconsistent bullshit. He's a scorer, right? That's what he do. That's what PG is a scorer. That's the argument we use. He's inconsistent from shooting. I don't know when this started that we start judging scores off of field goal percentage. We didn't do it for Kobe Bryant, who his career is 44%. We didn't do it for Tracy McGrady, who's 43.5. We didn't do it for Carmelo Anthony, who's 44.7. We damn sure didn't do it for Allen Iverson was 42.5% from the field. We never use this efficiency bullshit for scores. You don't do that with scores to, to try to evaluate them. You don't evaluate a score by no field goal percentage and say, because he's not shooting over 50% from the field, he's not consistent. That's never how you judge a score. You judge a score based off how many points they generate when they score the basketball. How 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 skilled they are scoring the basketball. When the last time you heard somebody say Carmelo Anthony was inconsistent because he wasn't efficient? When did you hear Tracy McGrady, who shot 43.5% from his whole career, he wasn't consistent? What I remember hearing was Tracy McGrady was a bucket. Tracy McGrady was, you know, one of the greatest, best scores. I even heard some people say T-Mac was better than Kobe at a point. A guy who's never been out the first round until he got to the Spurs. A guy who's never been to the conference finals. But he, but, but, but him is the glass half full. Kobe, my favorite player of all time. No one ever, the only people that use efficiency for him is LeBron, LeBron guys who wants to try to lower his, lower him. The only people that use stats like like our stat geeks, who are people who want to feel a part of the game, who didn't play. That's what stat geeks are. They can only relate to the game through numbers. They can't relate to the game through playing, through feel. They can't relate to. They still want it. They, they can only relate and feel a part of it when they can say, "Oh, he, he didn't shoot fifty percent. He didn't shoot forty nine percent." So if you're going to tell me 46% is inefficient or it's, it's inconsistent, what the fuck is 42%, 44%, 43%? And these are guys, and, and, and Donovan Mitchell, another one, 44%. Like, what is, what is that? There's only two players in NBA that I can remember that is that efficient from the field while being a great two-way player, and that's Michael Jordan and Kawhi Leonard. That's it. 
you're not going to find a guy who shoots 49 to 50 percent from the field game in and game out while being an elite lockdown defender you are not going to find that Kobe didn't ever do it. He's still top. He's top three for me of all time. Kobe Bryant, top three. Kevin Durant, nah, he didn't do that. He's not a lockdown defender. He's a great help side defender, but he ain't, he ain't exerting a lot of energy on defense. Very efficient on the offensive end, though. You don't judge a score by no by no efficiency. You you can do that with bigs like centers and power forwards who are by the rim all day. Oh, Giannis is shooting 62% from, yeah, because he's up, he's by the rim. Oh, Shaq's shooting 64%. Oh, because, yeah, he's dunking the ball all the time. Oh, LeBron James is 55. Yeah, because all his shots are coming into the paint. You don't judge no damn score from no, for, about, for no, from no field goal percentage and call him inconsistent because he's not shooting 50% from the, from the field. You're going to drive yourself crazy thinking that a player is supposed to be doing that every game, game in, game out. That's just not realistic. It's not realistic for somebody to say, I want to see Paul George attack the rim relentlessly when he has a skill set where he doesn't have to do that. That's not, he's not Russell Westbrook. He's not Giannis Antetokounmpo. Those guys have to attack the rim because they can't rely on their skill set. They can't shoot three. They can't shoot the mid range consistently. What, what's the point of having a skill set if you, you have to drive to the rim all the time? That's kind of defeating the purpose. Yeah, maybe at 22, 23, 25. You saw PG tack the rim more relentlessly before the leg injury or when he was just more like less skilled or more. Um, but once he got older and methodical, he's going to shoot mid, more mid-range shots. The only problem I've had with PG is when he starts shooting the three-point shot more, more times than not. I know I never had a problem with him shooting mid-range shots or shooting 15, 18-footers. Keep shooting them bitches. Kawhi does it. Kevin Durant does it. That's what scorers do. That's what mid-range guys do. Devin Booker does the same thing. They shoot mid-range shots. DeMar DeRozan shoots mid-range shots. Their percentages are around the same as PG, 44 to 46% or any type of score. So once again, I'm wrapping it up, though, right here. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George will be the best duo in the postseason. The Clippers will be the best team in the postseason. Now, as far as the, the system goes, as far as the structure goes, the scheming, that's the one, that's the one question mark I have for the Clippers. This the what type, what are the their, their half their half time, their timeouts, their PTO, things of that nature? How will they respond in those situations and how will they regroup? That's the one thing I'm concerned about with the Clippers. But that's all for that, though. I'm going to let y'all in. Take a two-minute break. We'll be right back.
All right, y'all. So we are back at it, man. If you guys want to come in here, I just dropped the like button. Um, I just dropped the uh the link for y'all to come in here. I'm gonna let y'all come in here and cook. And um, let me look at some of these comments. Uh, let's see, the average field we're saying this year is 47.4, 47.5 up to 48%. Yeah, what's 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 um, let me see, PG shooting 46.3, so really a percentage off. I mean, I mean, come on, man, like. That 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 should not be. There is many players in this league, man, who are scores shooting worse than that. Like I said, like Bubba's just said, forty-seven point five to forty-eight percent rounded off. This is what it is. Numbers are not everything. They're not. That's why I say stat geeks get on my nerves. They 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 really do. You say I critique PG 13 for not consistently shooting at least 20 times a game. Right. But again, he can't shoot that if, and you saw it last night when he's not getting the ball. That's why I say Harden. See, this is the thing about Harden. The Clippers have sacrificed for his playing style. It's time for him to sacrifice a little bit. You don't have to bring the ball up every time. Let some let Kawhi bring it up. Let PG bring it up sometimes. Mix it up a little bit. You go away in the corner. That's that 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 needs to be more implemented. You can't have him just stand in the corner. He's gonna get bored. That's what happens to Lucas teammates. They get bored. <clears throat> you said shit. Oh, get over it. Why you at the bottom of the barrel this year? Like every other year, y'all you talking about, bro? I'm gonna tell y'all something. Without that bubble, the Lakers, without the without the bubble, the Lakers' entire um, run would be just would just be would just be a disappointment. <clears throat> what up, Q? Yo, yo, what up, BJ? Salute to you in the panel. What's going on, y'all? What's up, brother? How you doing, bro? Yeah, um, for sure though, I agree with everything you said, man. Man, when 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 Paul George and Kawhi rolling like how he was last night, man, the Clippers is unstoppable, bro. But besides them two, they really did their thing and they had a, a efficient night for sure. But I, the guy that stood out to me yesterday was my boy Busy Bones, man. He, the way he controlled that floor last night, bro, was very impressive. I ain't gonna lie, he really was putting a lot of people in spots and positions. But one thing I also noticed is, is the Clippers do play better basketball where we're not holding the ball. When that ball is moving and we getting shots up earlier, we're converting much better and having way better opportunities, you know what I'm saying, to score. And I've seen that last night, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, bro, I ain't going to lie. Sometimes Harden does get the the, uh, the offense involved as far as the playmaking and shit, but he has a lot of moments where he's just dribbling. He's stagnant, and that shit slows up the pace of the team. You know what I'm saying? Because Harden may make some step backs, but if he's missing it, you know what I'm saying? That's a waste of possession. It's a waste of possession because, one, we took off a lot of time, and, two, you know what I'm saying? Some, some, some of those shots don't be high-quality shots. You know what I'm saying? So right. yesterday, yesterday, so yesterday, I've definitely seen some of the best basketball that I have watched the Clippers play since coming into the All Star break. You know what I'm saying? Because we haven't been really looking very well on both sides of the floor. Some some nights we either better on offense, and some nights we better on defense. You know what I'm saying? But collectively, yesterday was definitely a collective effort on both sides. You know what I'm saying? As far as the scoring and and defense, for sure. You know. So what? You, so tonight we got the Pels. So what do you feel about Bones continuously starting and letting Harden I want rest? To. I want him to. I think Harden should rest. Like Thomas and them other guys were saying, man. And I also said this, said this too earlier uh, a few games ago. I think the younger guys should be playing, uh, bro. Like they they got 
the fresh legs. They got the energy. You know what I'm saying? Busy Bones, when he's in, when Bones is in rhythm, Bones is a guy that can score. I, I know, I noticed that. I know, I hope, hopefully, I know y'all know that for sure. Bones is a guy that can score. When he's in rhythm, he's a guy that can give you some buckets. I think he should be playing even when Westbrook was playing. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you should have just benched Bones. Bones is an option that you could go to. If a guy like Russell Westbrook or Norman Powell, you know what I'm saying, it may not be having a good night off that bench. You know what I'm saying? You could give Bones an opportunity because he's still somebody that could put the ball, you know what I'm saying, in the cup. He could put the ball in the cup, and he's a very good three-point shooter. Bones can shoot the three very well. He shoot it better than Russell Westbrook. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, th I think he right. should get that opportunity, you know what I'm saying, just in general. He's a good player. Yeah, and that's what I saw last. That's the one thing about it, people – don't talk about he, sh he can shoot he can shoot. can shoot he can shoot he's like a more controlled westbrook with the speed so yeah. i like i was encouraged seeing that with bones i just like i said man like he, we ain't really seen them against all the teams so i would throw him out there man i think he I, should play. Out there. I think i think he should play i like the way he controlled the, uh, the game yesterday and uh i want to see what he do tonight i i liked how he we just getting everybody involved. He 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 put. I like to I like his shot selections because a lot of times what Bones will do is when his time is limited and he he does get in the court. A lot of the times he'll try to go for his. You know what I'm saying? And I noticed that. But when he is getting more minutes, he shows the potential of a player that he can be on on the playmaking side and the scoring side. A lot of the times when Talu is limiting him. He's just trying to get his shots up, you know what I'm saying? But they may not be falling or they might, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times, if he's in and out of rotation, he's not going to be in rhythm. Bones is a rhythm kind of player. Like, once he's in the game and he's he feel like he's involved, he's going to play basketball, bro. You know what I'm saying? He's going to play ball. Right, right. He's going to play I basketball. Think, I think Harden's biggest thing is, is, like, his biggest thing is with Zubak. He has a connection with him. I feel like sometimes he forgets that. Yeah, Zubak is, you know, we want him involved. We want him to feed, but we don't want to lose Kawhi PG. Like as far as, you know, what they're they're there for. They're they're the top guys that need to be doing the scoring and shot making and stuff like Correct. that. You gotta feed 100%, them first. 100%. Feed them first. Like the that's the man, that's the most efficient I've ever seen those two. Mm -hmm. For sure. For real. It's like they 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 didn't even miss yesterday. The way they was playing yesterday. And I watched that game. You could just t it, like you said though. It reminded me like of what we're what we're gonna see if both of them are healthy approaching the, you know, what I'm saying the postseason because the way they looked yesterday, it really didn't look like it took a lot of effort for them to do that. You know what I'm saying? It, it really did it. it. Like a lot of a lot of poor George shots came from, you know, what I'm saying just just playing in the in the half court set and just catching and shooting a lot of the times. You know what I'm saying? When that ball was moving, and we was getting open looks. He was just knocking down shots, and that's what the best players just got to do. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, if PG put up that type, of, those type of numbers, or even half of that per night of what he doing on a consistent, like on a on a consistent night, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna be good regardless. It's just I think like I felt like James, James Harden was uh James Harden was doing that. He was getting a lot of more people involved. I think a few games back. Uh, before the All Star break, he was getting a lot of more people involved. But a lot of times, I notice once Harden gets in stagnant situations, he just relies on the pick and roll. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the ball movements stop, and it's just either his step back or the pick and roll. And he has to be consistent on the playmaking field, in a sense, like you said. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not just pick and roll and step backs. Nah, you still got to get everybody they touches and make sure Kawhi and PG, the main guys that's supposed to be scoring is in the right positions and getting the ball in the right positions to execute, you know what I'm saying, to get those type of shots. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, I definitely appreciate it. Um, man, so we got New Orleans tonight. Um, I think you was one of the few saying that you don't, you don't, you're not really worried about New Orleans. I, at all. I'm not worried about New Orleans. I know we could figure them out. We, 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 BJ, you can't really worry about a team, right? Yeah, okay, okay. The Pelicans might, yes, they have beat us. You know what I'm saying? They, they beat us. But they beat us because of, I, I, I'm i not going to take a lot from them because Zion did kill us. You know what I'm saying? He killed Mason Plumlee that game or whatnot. But you know what I'm saying? we That game, we didn't really come out with no effort. We was very flat. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see the Clippers 
two months ago played them on a full strength and we actually locked in. We, bro, we blew them out by 30. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to just beat a team by 30 that you feel like you don't have the one up on. We, I know we got one up on the Pelicans, bro. We blew them out. I watched the game. We mm-hmm. blew them out. Like, when we was really playing basketball and we was really locked in. You know what I'm saying? If the Clippers now allow the Pelicans to, to get going and we playing with no effort and no defense and we go back to certain habits that we have, then, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Of course, the Pelicans may beat us because they have the talent, too. They have the defense, too, you know what I'm saying? But if you're playing Clippers basketball, they can't they can't mess with us at all. Man, they can't. They can't mess with us at all, man. Yeah. We, they, 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 and like I said, like, they got one defender, really, and that's, and that's Herb Jones to put on, you know, PG, um, but I mean, like I said, even with a score like that, man, like you don't, it's you can't really call a person in, inconsistent when they just because they're field goal percent. Like a score is gonna have this is a like you get you can't judge a score's efficiency from a, a to a centers. Like all these great players that we love were shooting 43, 44 percent for their careers. Yeah, you know I mean, so are they inconsistent? Did they? Not do they make the game harder for themselves, or was it just like it just goes with the the flow? Like you're gonna right. have you're shooting the ball from farther from the basket, so surely you're not gonna score at the same rate as like a Giannis onto the Kumpo right. or a LeBron or a Shaq, who's right by the rim, whose closest are who, whose shots are right by the by the basket. That's just it's just unrealistic. That's that's true, BJ. Paul, sure. I, I like I like I like a lot of um I like what Paul George like yeah like y'all said is playing closer to the basket. He's you know what I'm saying and getting that rhythm of just not you know settling because a lot of time when he settles, I noticed that he you know what I'm saying he can miss a lot of early shots mm-hmm. in the game. You know what I'm saying and a lot of times right. if he played from closer in and then stretch his game out, he'd right. be a lot more. Efficient, right. you know, so on a night right. on a nightly basis, rather than he starts from go. out to in. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, yes. that's where a lot of times he he messes up with his game. You know what I'm saying? He's yes. starting out low post. You know what I'm saying? You get your. I like when Paul George is creative in that mid and low post. You know what I'm saying? That's when you could take yes. those those crazy difficult shots. But a lot of the times, when he starts trying to create from the three and trying to step back and do all those things, he may make some, but he's not as efficient from there. I like when Paul George is catching the ball from the three. When he's off ball, he could just catch that shit and just shoot in rhythm. That's when a Paul right. George makes a lot of shots, bro. If you really notice, he makes a lot yes. of threes when he's just being patient, letting the offense come to him, and he's catching that ball and just shooting. When he's trying to step back, sometimes he may not be as set. You know what I'm saying? His foot or his feet may not be as set. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the times, you know what I'm saying, these guys, sometimes Paul George could rush his shots. You know what I'm saying? He may have an opportunity and and like I say, he may pull it back out and make the shot more difficult for himself. You know what I'm saying? Once he figure out those things, you know what I'm saying? He a, he a bucket. Bro. He a bucket regardless, but he got to just make the game, you know what I'm saying, easier for himself. Right. That's 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 facts. Shit, I'm waiting for uh, Sean to be coming in any minute. I think he said he's getting loaded. But um, he said haters is mad, man. Like I said, man, yeah. haters is mad as hell. We got to just, BJ, what I noticed, though, we, you know what I'm saying? We got to just win a chip, bro. That's just what it is. That's what it's going to have to come down to. Like, no matter what they say after the chip is what they say, but as long as you got a chip, the Clippers get a chip for that organization, bro, a lot of a lot of things, will, I think, will be cut down in half, at least, you know, somewhat, because it's like, you got that you got that monkey off your back, bro. It's just like that, you know, that monkey will always be there, bro, because, you know, championships matter to people, you know what I'm saying? When... When you watching that ball, when you watching ball, we all want championships. You know what I'm saying? You always, you all want your team to win a championship. So we gonna have to win one of those things. That's just what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I think the Clippers could win. I think we should be able to win. Honestly, I don't see nobody stopping us. You know what I'm saying? But you got to get it done when it's all said and done. You know, got to get it done. When you say you don't see nobody stopping us, what you mean? Like you think the when I when I say think, I don't see nobody stopping us, I think we have the best team in the NBA as far as depth wise, as far as shooting, as far as defense, as far as the as far as the wings. Maybe maybe our bigs can step up if we if we do if they give a little more effort. You know what I'm saying? Because I like Daniel Tice. 
You know what I'm saying? If Zubak is playing with the, with his with his good floaters and he's actually being a good rim protector, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have good, good bigs at that. You know what I'm saying? I think we got a good point guard in James Harden if he makes better decisions on a nightly basis. We got two of the best wing players, two-way players in the NBA, bro. Nobody can't really mess with us, you know what I'm saying? Besides the health factor. That's really about it. You know what I'm saying? I think the Clippers got... It all said and done. We got the full, we got the full, the full load, the full package, bro. You know what I'm saying? We got yeah, everything. There's nothing that we don't have. So what? How you feel about the coaching? I mean, Talu can make better decisions. You know, he he can. You know, but hopefully, hopefully, his coaching doesn't, you know, like put us in a, a tougher situation than we have to be. You know, uh, at least in the postseason because. Coaching would be important in those type of situations, uh, you know, depending on the matchups, it will be very important. So, you know, uh, hopefully I don't, I don't like to switch defense. I like when we playing through that shit, bro. I like when we actually guarding our man, like, you know what I'm saying? I like when Paul George and, and, and Kawhi and them other guys is actually being assertive on defense. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that switching scheme that Talu runs. It's just, I don't like it. You know, I think, we have the power to guard anybody. We got the size, the length to guard anybody. You know what I'm saying? And once you're playing defense, you know what I'm saying? And Talu putting out the right people in the, on the court, you know what I'm saying, to execute that proper defense and offense. I think we we good, bro. Honestly, you know what I'm saying? I like that, that Daniel Tyson, Mason Plumlee swap out. You know what I'm saying? I think Daniel Tyson produced way more. I like, I like what Talu did there. You know what I'm saying? I think that's very underrated that he did that. I don't – I never really liked – I didn't really care for Mason Plumley game as far as like how he was playing before he got benched. You know what I'm saying? I like Daniel Tice. Daniel Tice brings a lot to the offense and defense, whether he's undersized. You know what I'm saying? That Mason Plumley could do that. That Mason Plumley wasn't really doing. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times Mason yeah. Plumley was taller, but the same rebound Mason Plumley was getting, Daniel Tice was getting. The Tice got a better floater. You know what I'm saying? He got a better three-point shot. Now, like Thomas said, too, I don't know why he ever even benched him to begin with. Because when Mason Plumlee came back, he said, yo, y'all can keep what y'all got going on. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to mess that up. And if you notice, when Mason Plumlee did get back into that lineup and Daniel Tice was starting to slow down, we was losing some games. Right. We was losing some games. We was. So that was a great adjustment from Talu. You know what I'm saying? Talu, no, I think Talu sometimes he just be on his his bullshit sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But when he act, when he gets act on, then when our back is against the wall, he 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 can show up for us. You know what I'm saying? And put people in the right positions though, too. Cause I wouldn't put all the Clippers failures on him. You know what I'm saying? Cause we the players and coaching both have jobs that we both have to fulfill, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I we definitely both have a job, so we have to kind of interconnect with one another. Both sides have to kind of no, that's a fact. Uh, do, do what they need to do. Um, I'm just I'm excited about the, I'm ready for the postseason. I'm ready for the postseason to start so we can kind of like get that going. Cause I mean, yeah, I'm it's like 17 games left in the season, but I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for the for the playoffs. Yo, I'm I'm ready for that too, bro. I'm ready for that too. I think we may either see uh the Pelicans, the Kings, or the Suns first round. Cause that fifth spot to uh eighth spot is is kind of varying between seedings. So a lot of them is losing, some of them is winning. You know what I'm saying? I think tonight is a big game for us as far as seeding. You know what I'm saying? I think we beat the Pelicans tonight for sure. If we beat the Pelicans tonight for sure, bro, we're, we're gonna create more separation from them. You know what I'm saying? Cause they're gonna go down again, we go up again. Mm -hmm. So instead of being three games apart. We'll be four, you know what I'm saying? So that's solid, you know what I'm saying? We could keep that fourth seat for now. You know what I'm saying? If we move up to the third or the second, then that's even better for us. But I think tonight is a very key game. We have to win. We have to win tonight game. tonight's game. We have to. That'll separate us from the fifth and below, you know, because I don't want us to get back close to that fifth spot and sixth spot and play around there because you don't know how these last 17 games could go between, you know what I'm saying, these teams. Exactly. Exactly. It's yeah, like man. I think it's I think it's uh the Pelicans, Suns, Kings, Mavs, uh Lakers and Warriors are like all like right behind each other. Yeah, they 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 literally all swapping out. So I don't I don't want to fall into that category with them and play that game. 
I'd rather just nah, have nah. our spot secured and we just get ready for the first round and the home court that we do got for the first round at least, you know? Home I mean, quarter, it's still home. a chance we can catch that third if because we're two and a half games behind Minnesota, so they got yeah, back to back against Utah this weekend. So Minnesota and uh I think Denver's schedule is the easiest, but I think Minnesota, Minnesota, um, they have a few tough games, you know what I'm saying? That they 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 have to win. So I think we still can get back into that third spot, you know. You can. But we yeah. gotta we gotta win we gotta win our games too. That's coming up. I think we I think our next few games is is pretty solid. Yeah, we got Atlanta on a Sunday, so that should be a, a dub. Um, yeah, they kind of beat up right now, so I think we should be Atlanta. Yeah, uh, yeah I think we, we played the the the, the Blazers one game. Uh, I think our next few games we should we should win majority. Honestly, we got an easy back to back. Is it against Portland? We play them twice. Like who do we play twice in a row? I think it's a it's a um it's a pretty um easy uh back to back. Can't think of the team. She yeah. but, but it'll 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 definitely be good if we can maintain at least if we but if we do get the third seed. The third seed played the second seed in the second round, so we still wouldn't have home court advantage even if we do get the third seed. We only have the home court advantage at least for the first round. So, I mean, I mean, that I mean, I think we could we could we could still win on the road. You know what I'm saying? But oh I don't yeah, know if we're gonna catch, I don't know if we're oh, gonna yeah. catch that second seed. I don't know if we're gonna catch that second seed. But one thing yeah, I can uh, say about the Clippers, BJ, that one thing I can say, bro, I like, I love how the Clippers play on the road. That's why I'm not scared about that home court advantage here because I know we could go to Minnesota or Phoenix or Denver and steal some games. I love how the Clippers play on the road. It's like we we play better on the road than home. I feel a lot of yeah, times. Yeah, we do. We do. We play better. At home. We play better on the road than at home. I think we, we were we, way much more scarier team. Yeah, we a scary team on the road. I think when we yeah, go on we, the road, we really put that pressure on them teams. We really do. We put them pressure on it because I feel like we have nothing to lose when we on the road. You know what I'm saying? We just out there playing ball, and you know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna have to match us. <laughs> I think a lot of times the, the the Clippers get very comfortable at home. You know what I'm saying? We get very little too laid back when we go to the crib. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, we come we get, out with a certain, we come out with a certain type of force when we on the road. Yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely hearing that. Definitely hearing that. Shit. See, I'm I'm looking at the schedule now. Let's see. This. Hmm. See. Clippers, we got Hawks. We got the Blazers on the twentieth, which is next week. Um, yeah, we got the Blazers twice. Yeah, that's those 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 honestly should be wins. Those should be wins. Those Sixers, be wins. we got the Sixers on the twenty fourth, which should be a win. Yeah. Um, we got the Pacers the next day in a back to back. And then we got the Sixers on the road in the twenties. Yeah, the Sixers. This when we get into April, we got the Kings. We got the Nuggets, the Jazz, the Cavs, the Suns yeah. twice. Jazz yeah. and the Rockets. But along BJ, as long as as long as we winning those those games that we need to win to end March off, though, we we we'll create enough separation to still even say if we do was to. You know what I'm saying? Win some of those games, lose some of those games, we can still keep our seating. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to really hurt us too, too bad. But if we lose in these games and then we go into April, you know what I'm saying? Winning some and losing some, we can still end up, you know what I'm saying, falling. And see, also, the the Nuggets, what's this? All the teams in front of us has played more games. 
the yeah. Nuggets, the T Wolves, and the uh, Thunder, they've all played at least one game, one or two games more than us. So we still we're about to play and catch up to them. And then, like tonight, Minnesota don't play again tomorrow. So if we win tonight, we'll only be a game and a half behind Minnesota. That's why so. I think we. I, I think that's why we're playing so much back to backs. Because we behind, yep. we behind, we behind so much games, you know. So I think we, that's why we playing all these back to backs. But like y'all said, next year it should be way better because. Oh god. Yeah, the arena. Yeah, we got our own arena next year. So that'll definitely make our scheduling much better. Facts. Oh man, man. But see if anybody don't want to come else in here, we're gonna get ready to shut it down. I'm just uh Sean said he would be in here in a minute, but I don't know where he at. Let's see some of these comments. They really say we must keep that third seed. Yeah, I mean we can get the third. I wouldn't mind it. We get Denver in the first in the second round, which I'm I more than love love that matchup. Cause it's Kings, Suns, Mavs, Lakers are ninth, Warriors are tenth. Yeah. See somebody else. Second Talu. Sense when adjustments are needed, his intuition isn't good enough. Yeah, he he can he can do that. He just when he does it is the question. Is he gonna wait till we down so far in the series where you know we have to make up for time? So that's gonna be kind of the the question. Let's see. So I wouldn't mind if we avoid the wolves in the first. In the playoffs, unless your young stars get more reps because we clearly need uh uh I mean I'm not really ducking nobody, but you know, it is what it is. Do you think you can you bones can get minutes in the playoffs while Kawhi and PG in the rotation? That depends. On Russ and Harden, that's going to depend on how much Russ plays and Harden plays. He can get minutes. Um, I think somewhere down the line, Russ is going to get less time. So, uh, should be a great game tonight, though. Should be a great game tonight. Let me look at. Y'all, y'all, let me hear from y'all. Do y'all think Kawhi and PG are the best duo in the playoffs? Playoffs. So 76 votes, 49% said they will. 30% don't say they know they won't. Um, 5% said in the West they will, but not on both sides, and 16 is undecided. So this is a good little, it's a good little outlet of people. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see, PG and Western Conference Finals by himself. Yep, Kawhi NBA Championship by himself. No Hall of Fame help. Yeah, that's the point. These two have already won. They've already they've already done more with less. So unfortunate. They ain't had a they ain't had them too healthy since the uh since the 2021 playoffs. And that's how we saw them healthy. And they was giving guys fits. So I agree with James Harden giving up the ball more. Plus it makes us more predict. Yeah. That that's what it is. It's just again, when you go down the court every time and do the same same thing over and over it gets repetitive it gets boring and it gets um 
the people just i mean certain people just can't deal with that man like that's just what it is you don't want to do that in a, you don't want to do that in a, in a seven game series certain matchups he can exploit james hart i'm talking about but you know for the most part it's, it's give the ball to these two first so Oh, new! It's all the new narratives, man. Said the hate is real. <clears throat> so I'm gonna wait for five more minutes. Nobody comes in in five minutes. I'm gonna shut it down. Just wanted to kind of bring this out to y'all, man. What y'all thought? What y'all think? What y'all thoughts about this? see uh let me see let me see if y'all have not already liked the video make sure y'all hit the like button as y'all come in here though water x we know you like the troll <laughs> I'll be seeing you in the comments. I know you like to troll, bro. It's all good, though. Mm. Man, people must be at work listening in. Said the playoff scenes are more able to figure out your game plan because they play one team in a seven game series. Yep. And see, that's going to be the issue with a lot of these other teams. Once they, it's called getting punched in the mouth. Once you you wrote the same plan you had in a in a regular season, see, this is what's going to favor us. We can attack you in so many different ways. See, part of being a great playoff team is not showing all your cards too soon in a regular season. The reason why Soccer Miller can go home against a Golden State Warrior team like they did last year is because. Yeah, their offense is number one in the league. Yes, they, you know, have the same, you know what I'm saying, um, type of sets in the half-court offense. But um, shot making and clutchness is what won that series. That fourth quarter in game seven, Sacramento, that's all you needed to see is that they basically crumbled. Steph Curry, I think, had 50 points in that game. See, that's what, it, that's what, that's what stars do. Stars carry series. Stars are what gets you over the hump. Stars are what's carried you over the finish line. Role players do their thing, but for the most part, you're going to have to rely on your big guns to do it. And that's what Kawhi and PG are, the big guns. He said, do you prefer playing the Pelicans or the Kings or the Lakers in the first round? Kings. The the thing, BJ, the thing that make the uh the Clippers a very scary team to play, yeah, is 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 our scoring, man. Because you you really right. can't like if you let Kawhi play one on one, right, against your best defender. Nine times out of ten, Kawhi is gonna be the best player, right? So when he's the best player on the floor, you have to double team him. So now you're 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 changing over the rotations of a defense that you have to play to guard the Clippers. So somebody's gonna be open all the time. That's why a lot of the times exactly uh James Harden or T Man or Norman or Paul George, they be having a lot of catch and shoot threes because you have to you have to double team Kawhi on a nightly basis, whether he's whether he's hot or not. And when PG's hot, you, you're going to have to start doubling him because when PG's the type of guy, when he's in rhythm and he's feeling himself, if you let him, if you let him keep getting into them spots, he's going to, he's going to annihilate you. He's going to annihilate you. And that's, a, that's what makes the Clippers down to even Harden sometimes, BJ, because a lot of times when Harden is in, the, like when them type of players are in that mode where they're scoring and there's nothing you really can do about it, you're going to have to double team them. And we have three guys that can do that. You know what I'm saying? That you can, you know what I'm saying? I could potentially get hot to the point where it's like, damn, like 
you don't have no answer. So you double team Harden now PG and Kawhi is open. You double team PG now Harden and uh Harden and Kawhi is open and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Altogether, it's the same thing, and that's why the Clippers is going to excel because there's a lot of scoring punch. There's a lot of scoring punch punches, and if the Clippers can execute in them scoring opportunities, that's when the Clippers become. You know what I'm saying? Like basically un unstoppable, bro. Damn near, bro. Because a lot of times teams keep up with us because we miss a lot of shots too. We have, we miss a lot of shots. And them same shots cool. that we do get and we make, you know what I'm saying? The Clippers then may become unstoppable. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to beat them. It's very hard. Let me uh let my man Taz come in the building. What's good, Taz? What's good, BJ? What's good to the panel, to the chat, man? Hope everybody doing all right. Um man. I am really shocked, but I'm not really shocked, but I am shocked. And sorry if it's a whole bunch of noise in the background. I'm at work, man. But um, yeah. the way Bones played last night, I always expected him to be a scorer. But the facilitation that he had last night, man, make me question Russell Westbrook a lot, dog. Like, it, is it really worth the Russell Westbrook being out there if he can't stretch the floor the way Bones can? I, it's it's a lot of questions that come That's to my nice. mind after last night, man. Like it, the team looks a lot more dangerous with Bones out there on the floor, man. I, that's just what I'm saying. And like you said, his main objective last night was to get the ball to PG and Kawhi. He did that, dog. And two of the most efficient games, well, one of the most efficient games we've ever seen by them guys. Like Paul George only missing one shot. Yeah. <laughs> When was the last time we could say we seen that shit, dog? It's been a minute since I, I don't even think I've seen the game with Paul George only missing one shot on 10 attempts, 11 attempts, you know? So it last night, should it, it should show Ty Lue a lot. Because, like you said, Russ is going to get played out in the playoffs just because he can't stretch the floor as good. But if you got bones coming in, Instead of that, that's a dangerous team to guard, man, because that second unit is going to be fast. Like, Bones play fast. You got Norman Powell that play fast. Uh, Amir Coffey, he can play fast. You know, that that's, that's something that this team definitely needed. And <laughs> just like all of us on this show, we still confused on why the fuck Ty Lue even made the decision to take Bones out of the rotation in the first place. You know what I'm saying? So last night showed me a lot, and I'm happy that it did. But I will say another thing. I am I was glad to see Kawhi last night because I was unsure of what I was going to, you know, get if he did play. But I could tell his back injury is not going to be that serious. And that's a good thing. Like uh, that, it gave me a sigh of relief last night just to see him out there on the court playing. And then he actually had an efficient game on both ends of the court. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was a lot of ups last night. The only thing is with me now is to do that with a contender. And that's why this next game is going to be important. As much as we're not worried about New Orleans, like I'm not worried about New Orleans, they are a team that we can learn a lot from. Like they're they're the one team outside of a Minnesota that's gonna try to play bully ball with you, with uh, with Valanciunas and and uh, what's the big Zion down there in the paint. Zubac he's gonna have to step his game up playing against bigger teams. So this game tomorrow is gonna show us a lot, I believe. You know, but overall, I. <laughs> <laughs> like y'all saying, this, this Clippers team going to be dangerous, man. I mean, all the way around the board, y'all was talking about Thice. Thice has been stepping up big time on the defensive end, and that's something that I don't think we really just expected like that. We expected for him to, you know, bring energy, you know, go to the 50-50 balls that we not used to getting to. I mean, it, it was a lot that we had in our mind for Thice, but defensively, being undersized, 
man, I, I don't even know if I would want a Mason Plumley out there sometimes with the way he just brings that much energy to our team, man. So it, last night was a, a, a good sight for sore eyes. A team without James Harden, a team that ain't got to worry about being stagnant for the first 10, 15 seconds of the play clock. You know, it, it, it felt man. good. Like they played free last night. You can tell the score alone says it all. Shit. But yeah, yeah man, that, that that's most of what I got to say. Yeah, that's that 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 just it felt like I right, we gonna get we gonna get shots up. We gonna we gonna right. get shots up. That's that's what that felt like. And then yep. that's going to energize our defense. Mm-hmm. That's going no. to energize our defense. Yeah, man, and James Harden has a good place with this team. But like you said, like th- this is the one thing that I hated about James Harden, especially coming over to this team, bro. He will milk the clock for at least a good 15 seconds before he even pass the ball every time. Like that shit is so damn predictable, bro. You you literally let a whole defense set up in the in, in those exactly. Like, yep. <laughs> It, it don't make no sense. You got people thinking about double teaming Kawhi on every possession and is able to get into the position to do that just because James Harden holding the ball. Like you said, bring Paul, bring Paul George up with the ball, quickly get over to Kawhi. Kawhi is most likely going to shuffle it somewhere else because you know he's not going to hold the ball that long unless he's trying to go into his bag. But, you know, it – it frees up the offense to do a whole lot more than what we used to see with James Harden. And again, James Harden, he has his place. And Zubak and our bigs, that's his main place. <laughs> Is that in hitting the open corner on those pick and rolls that we know everybody in the world know you about to do. That, that That's his main place. Other than that, like he's he plays defense whenever he wants to, which is definitely not even half the time. Even though he's been doing better this year, but the facilitating and we've seen his shot making disappear sometimes this season too. So it's it's more for the bigs. Bones was out there playing for everybody, and you could see that exactly. shit. Man. Exactly. <laughs> like exactly. You, it was it was clear as day, dog. Like he literally come past half court. Instantly push the ball out, move around the perimeter. He'll even cut off a of back cut sometimes. I, I don't really see James Harden doing much cutting at all. You know, he, like Bones is out there trying to do everything, trying to show Talu, like, yo, I'm ready to fucking play, dog. I don't know why you've been shooting me on this bitch. And I, shit, we need him. We need him. That's one thing I can say. We do need Bones. Uh, but, I mean, it, it's rare when you see Terrence Mann getting 10 shots up. I mean, that that alone says a lot. Terrence Mann getting 10 shots even though he only hit three. Shit, that means he must have been open or he was aggressive. We don't get that shit with James Harden. Yeah, that's why that's why I didn't feel bad, T man. I he hit four, he went four for ten. I didn't I was like, it's okay, shit. Next shot, next shot. I, I liked how he was he felt comfortable. And I'm like, he gonna hit them shots. I was like, he's shooting the ball like he knows he's gonna make the shot. Right. Right. Hey, with Terrence, man, you can you it's can only gonna make him better on three. Three. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, it, that defense, dog, his defense is definitely picked up last night. And then, like, what you was talking about him feeling confident, like, you can obviously tell that the ball was touching his hands a whole lot more. You know, with, with Paul George, I mean, not Paul George, but with uh, with James Harden, what he does is he gets the screen with Zubak, go to the middle of the floor, and he often does not look for Terrence Mann at all, unless Terrence Mann is wide open. But if he's doing that, he's going to either kick it to Norman Powell, he's kicking it to Paul George. And then even coming off the top of the key, he's instantly going to Kawhi. He don't look for Terrence Mann at all. You can tell Terrence Mann was like, all right, I, I'm going to fucking do what I want to do this game because the ball is touching my hands a lot. I'm feeling good tonight. Even though I'm not making all my shots, I'm still winning and I'm playing defense. That, that's all I want to want out of top the team. Man. So uh, I was I was happy last night. Let me go to Sean real quick, man. Appreciate you uh, 
Go ahead. What's what's good, cuz? What's good in the motherfucking hood? How y'all heard? Uh, heard quiet out the season, cuz? <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Who, who, who called y'all over this fucking Christmas shit? Shit, man. I heard Jason Taylor the best small four in the league, man. Who do? What what this fucking take to be coming from, man? This shit fought. That's it. The damn so didn't come out of uh, Skip Bayless' mouth. He wouldn't say no shit like that. He too smart to say shit like that. You know that's that's a shit to come out of fucking Shannon Sharp mouth, Stephen A. Smith, or or, or Dookie Dookie Jones. What one, one one of the other one of them motherfuckers had to say Kawhi was out for the season. It had to be one of them dumbasses, man. Ain't, ain't no ain't no way Skip Bayless said that. man. <laughs> curious who curious who the fuck said that man Shannon Sharp said that or Dookie said that Steven who said it man <laughs> man them Fucking guys dumb, is goofies man. them guys is goofies bro you know big goofies in, big goofies in the chat man big goofies if, in the if YouTube you know, if, you world. if you don't see that in the media how you just gonna assume somebody out for the season I doubt that hey Kawhi, that, that, man, that man video said my source I think I think his source and bombs up under the fucking LA bridge. I think he got some hella sources up on up under the bridge up there, man. They're hanging out in the tents and shit. He got big sources, man. You know, but Tom, wow, you, know what, you know what you know what you know what all y'all know, know what all that stem from, man. People just want the clippers to be unhealthy so they can say, Oh, you guys are never healthy. See, look, that's it. It's just like a they just oh, scared, I told, man. I told you kind of thing, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they just scary. They scary. Everybody's scared, bro. They don't want the Clippers to be healthy because they know. Once the it, Clippers the, the, to the problem the is they ain't got the IQ to go on another stream by themselves huh. and handle a basketball debate, there X's and O's schemes and, and, and shit. So, so like, if you can't, they can't handle their own debate. So they call for they call for three or four other guys to come into the debate, right? Or they get personal, start changing. So they have to fold because they can't outsmart the hate. See, it's easy to hate. My grandmother could be the best hater on YouTube if I allow her, right? Anybody can make up hate, but you can you break it down to expose the hate? If you can't, guess what? You join the hate. And that's what happens. They ain't got the IQ to, to, to dissect it and expose it on, on, in front of everybody. They can't do that. So they have to join it, right? So that's all that shit is. But, but, uh, but now that now that we got the the the, the Shannon Sharps and the Dukies and, and and the and the Stephen A's and the you know all the motherfuckers that that, 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 that just don't know shit about basketball just be talking for clout and shit. Now that we got them out of the way, uh, it it Tyloo exposed himself last night. Like this man Bones was playing this good early in the season. If y'all don't believe me, go back to the beginning of the season. Yep. He, he, even when he was fucking, uh, 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 even when the boys was losing, Bones was playing good, right? Ty Lue comes out. He he don't professionally handle it in the uh in, in the locker room behind closed doors, a quiet conversation, right? He comes out publicly, benches busy Bones publicly. He humiliates the kid in front of everybody. You know the same way he does Terrence Man by benching him after he plays great. <clears throat> the same way Coffee came out and started and scored 17 points in the first half, and then he only played 20 minutes the whole game. Like he just he, he this man is this man is outdated, and, and, and I'm about to break down what the realist is, is 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 afraid of with the three pointers, because I know what the realist is trying to say. Let me let me put it in basketball terms for y'all. Ty Rivers and Doc Rivers are from old school basketball. In the old days, man, we was coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me, man. I got a cold, man. I've been sick for like a week and a half. It, it. But when Ty and Dot was coming up, you guarded the twos before you guarded the threes because the area you was in, right? You, same, same with Popovich. That's why these guys struggle to win and, and do anything consistent. They're outdated. We're in a three-point area where you guard the three-point line before you guard the two-pointers. And, and, and I watched last night, and it, I'm, I'm, I pissed off at myself. It took me a fucking year, year and a half to figure this shit out. This man has Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and Coffee, and uh, along with others, dropping down to double team a bum ass Demar Rosen post up. Who the fuck is Demar Rosen, man? Is he fucking Shaquille O'Neal? Is he Akeem Olajuwon? Is he Will Chamberlain? Who? Who is he? Charles Barkley? Who, who the fuck is Demar Rosen? What has this guy ever fucking done on his own in life? Let's do it. 
Yo, Vucic, where the fuck you say his name? Who, who the fuck is he, bro? Is he Larry Bird? He draws double teams now? And yeah, what the realist is, is, is pissed off about is a valid point. Motherfucking Clippers leave three-pointers open all the time because that's what Doc and Ty are you. That's the era they grew up in. They don't allow twos. They give up the three. We're in a different era. So we were supposed to be up 35. We're only up nine. And you look back at it, it's because they hit 900 fucking threes. So even Tory Craig, the motherfucker couldn't make a shot to save his life in the playoffs. He got benched for a Kogi, or, or whatever, whatever the fuck the other dude's name is. And then they re him again. They benched over. They, they couldn't either want to guard Kawhi or anybody else in the playoffs. So they kept taking turns benching the motherfuckers because they, they was getting eight up and they couldn't score. This motherfucker coach, the, 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 Tory Craig, or whatever the fuck his name is, come in last night. And it's like three or four three pointers in a row, and we still leave. we still doubling, uh, 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 we're leaving him open. And I said, who the fuck is Kawhi, Paul George, Coffee doubling down on? I look in the post, and it's fucking Vucevic and Demar Derozan. Demar Derozan, it was getting locked the fuck up by Paul George. And uh, see, that's another thing, like y'all dumbasses don't know basketball. Y'all love to hate when Paul George don't score the ball, but you ain't the motherfuckers ain't smart enough to figure out he's locked up motherfuckers all the time. He, he has his lazy moments on defense. Yeah, he does. But his defense, when he clamps down, is fucking locked down defense. And you're going to see it in the playoffs, and Kawhi is going to do it, and that's why we're going to beat the hell out of people. These teams only got two players. We're going to lock them up. Because Paul, I mean, SGA couldn't score on Paul George. DeRosa, DeRosa couldn't score on Paul George. Carl Anthony Towns couldn't score. This motherfucker keeps locking people up, and nobody's talking about it. All they talk about, oh, he's fucking go two for fucking ten. The Clippers are going to win and send people home by playing fucking defense. But the realist is concerned that I read in the chat before I started getting loaded about an hour, two hours ago. It's a real fucking concern. Why are we doubling that? Who the fuck is boosting it? If that motherfucker beats the Clippers by posting up all night and goes for 45 and 28 and kills Tan uh, 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 Zubac, Stice, and Plumley, and, and he plays like Shaquille O'Neal, First of all, I'm going to call that's bullshit. He'll never do it again. Second of all, I'm going to tip my cap. <laughs> but but leaving these fucking shooters, why, man, what the fuck is Ty doing? They, and and, and, and you, y'all seen last night, Bones got the leash taken off of him. And this motherfucker goes to work. Killing everybody. Motherfucker, you're going in the paint. You think about it. He, he, here comes the Bones. He comes from one of them reckless-ass Bones turnover. Nah, he's Dot Terrence Man in the corner, which is what, what, what my man was just telling you. He, he's dotting people that, that don't normally get dotted 25 feet across the court because he felt free to play the game of basketball, right? Like Terrence Man, this motherfucker been shooting down to 50% for three since like early December. He's, he, he's fucking lighting it up. And, and this is why we ain't worried about nobody in the fucking playoffs because I, I watched Kawhi last night. Dodge about three fucking screens just to stay glued to DeMar DeRozan. So that lets me know that he w it's, it, it's going to happen when he wants it to happen. Right? Kawhi's very methodical. He don't give a fuck about what you're doing in, in January, December, November. When that motherfucker gets ready to dodge these screens, your ass is going to prison and ain't nothing you can do about it. This is why the Clippers are going to beat motherfuckers in the playoffs. Yeah, even tonight, I don't give a fuck if we lose tonight. Because the last time we played the Pelicans, this dumbass Ty Lue, let me pick on him again for being so smart, he put a six-foot-five guy for, in one game guarding Ingram, who's way too tall for him. The next time I look up, he's got the motherfucker signed to Zion Williams. I'm like, bro, what <laughs> in the fuck is this man doing? Yeah, that shit was stupid as hell. But the fact that I see Paul George locking up motherfuckers when he gets pissed off, and this is what BJ has a good point about. Ty, Ty probably don't ever do it. But maybe, maybe he will do it eventually. Because he did cuss LeBron James out in game seven at halftime. That's the only reason they, that's the only reason they beat Golden State. Because LeBron was choking. He, he got cursed out by Ty at halftime. I dropped that link in the chat for anybody who wanted to see it about two hours ago. But when Paul George does get pissed off, like BJ telling y'all, that motherfucker goes to war. And he, he locked the motherfuckers up. So that lets me know come playoff time when I bash against the wall, you get locked up. 
The only, the only worry, my concern has always been my concern. This motherfucker Tyloo playing too much offense. And to be honest with you, I watched Bone go to work last night versus starters. Motherfucker looked better than fucking Westbrook and, and Harden versus starters. And that motherfucker Alex Crusoe is a motherfucking lockdown defender. He was taking his turns guarding everybody. I'm sure he was getting fucking tired trying to guard everybody. But Bones are going to work. I'm going to uh, get off here in a second. Damn, Chicago shops called me. Um, uh, but anyway, this man, this man Ty, but he, he, he's something else. But this man is special. He's fucking special. But Kawhi looked like he was playing the rest of the regular season, not sitting out the rest of the regular season. So I, I, uh, I, I guess we need to go to our sources since our sources are a lot more reliable than, than, than these – Motherfuckers who listen to motherfuckers up under LA, LA bridges and live in tents. But quiet, quiet is gonna be fine. Also read up on, on one of the other Clippers uh, riders. <clears throat> quiet had back spasm last year. Is that back spasm before? Ain't nobody ever hear about it because they, they ain't really that serious. Motherfucker come out last night and was shooting like a thousand percent from fucking. I mean, for like a quarter and a half or some shit. It, Everything's fine. They don't make a fuck. We win or lose tonight. Yeah, we need the top six seed. I get that. But I ain't worried about shit because I'm seeing our defenders lock up motherfuckers. Come play all time. Ty Lue going to be forced to play these defenders. I keep telling y'all. He ain't going to have no choice. We're going to send motherfuckers home. I'm going to collect a lot of bread off YouTube. And motherfuckers going to be mad, BJ. And then... If they start getting mad, I'm going to tell them to go resort to their sources up under the L.A. bridge and the tents and get some information on how the Clippers going to lose. <laughs> so let me uh let me jump off here and call, call the headquarters back. I'll be back on in a second. Uh, but Clipper Nation, everything's fine, man. I promise y'all. Y'all got my word. I got my money up on all this shit. So I tell you, I tell you, I, I'm all in on it. But uh, uh, Dookie was over there counting three hundred dollars last night. BJ, remember we bet three hundred dollars that Kawhi would finish the playoffs. He was over there starting to count one, two. He <laughs> thought he was on to something with that with that with that fake ass source, garbage ass yeah, motherfucker. Can't, can't even count to ten. <clears throat> yeah, that motherfucker. He, hey, he 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 can count the ten ten subscriptions to buy followers though. He done it about ten times. <clears throat> he no, count up that that's ten. Grant. That's that's Grant doing that. That's his editor doing that. He, he counted 10 for him. Yeah, he that's, for, that's, that's why. That's why. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> All right. Yo, Taz, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, What's man. up? Yeah, he, Tom said, Sean said he'll be back. Um, All right, man. But, yeah, man, what you uh, – what you take from what he was saying? I mean, it's, it's clear as day. You know what? I might just need to grab some of Thomas' books real quick so I can start putting money on the line because this boy might be right on every fucking thing he say, God damn it. Uh, But, man, whew, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard to just sit here as – as we know, we at least we know we got a little bit of basketball IQ. You on a different level. I, I'm just saying a little bit for me. But for the little bit of basketball IQ that I have, I'm able to make better calls in a game than Ty Lue has. And he played. <laughs> he played fucking in the NBA, dog. He played with one of the greatest players in the NBA, man. Like, this shit is ridiculous, dog. Like, dude, his his scheming is weird. It's just weird, man. Like y'all say, he just want to let his players go and just play, which that ain't a coach's job. A coach's job is to strategize, bro. It's like he brings no strategy to the team. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Okay, my bad. Somebody was calling. Uh, but um, like it, 
it hurts my fucking brain cells to watch this dude sit there and put a Terrence man on uh what's old boy named Zion. Right. Like that, that that shit was like, yo, dude, what the fuck is you doing? It, it's it's simple shit like that. And you can tell that it's Talu influencing most of these decisions. Because yeah. you know it like you said, if your coach is a dumb coach, your team gonna play dumb. <laughs> And right. for all uh, for all the high IQ players that we have on our team, we should not look this dumb at times, bro. Like it, it it should it just shouldn't happen. We should not look lost after a timeout. We shouldn't look. Yeah, you, you cut Somebody out keep calling me, bro. My bad. My bad. Somebody called me again. Um, but like for the amount of high IQ players on our team, we should not look lost in transition defense. We shouldn't be confused on why we getting a shot clock violation because one guy want to dribble the clock out. Like it is some shit that Talu just lets happen. That he'll never take charge for, man. Like you're a coach, you're supposed to be the authority on the team on what should happen during the game, night in and night out. You should be the one motherfucker on the team that should be letting everybody else know what's going on. Why are our superstars confused? Out of everybody, they should not be the ones confused. Exactly. Like, like it, that's crazy as hell. Like I don't. I can't remember the last time I heard a NBA superstar tell the media that his team was confused. <laughs> that go that go around with people's heads too. They they Man. that go around with people's heads. They they don't understand that that as a cry for help. Man, like and it ain't just coming from nobody. It's coming from Kawhi Leonard. That usually if you ask him a question. He probably just gonna be like, "Oh, yeah, we did all right," you know, some shit like that, some mediocre shit. But when he starts breaking down game film for you in a press conference, it's something wrong with the coaching, man. Like I, out of all the years I watched him in San Antonio, Tim Duncan or anybody, one thing for sure, they ain't never, they was never confused coming out of a timeout, or they was never confused while they were playing the game. Like it, it was. Everybody knew exactly what they was doing at every point in time while they was on the court. If you missed your assignment, that's not confusion. That's just your lack of attention. Everybody knows you should be right there, but you just was the one that wasn't paying attention. Not the whole team is scrambling just to play defense on the perimeter. Like Sean said, why in the hell do we not guard the three ball? Like, we go down and hit a three. Alex Caruso come right back, hit a three. And it was literally Alex Caruso most of the time. <laughs> like, we cannot guard the three ball for nothing in this world. And I don't understand that. Like he said, doubling up on DeMar DeRozan on a, on a, uh, when he's posting up. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 child, you want me to you want me to post what you just uh, sent me in the group yeah, chat? Yeah, yeah, S send that so so everybody can see the races. Who everybody can see who's racist, who ain't racist. All right, I'll post it right now. Uh, boy, you, BJ, you got hey, my hey, blood uh, boiling with that question, boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, that shit was funny. Uh, uh, man, Kawhi been calling out the fucking coach for the longest time. Oh. Uh, is that the first time you heard that, Taz? You ain't never heard that interview, that that pre you ain't never heard that speech, that statement before? No, I watched him when he said it. Oh, 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 okay. I didn't yeah. know if you just now heard it. Man, man I've, I've been hearing you saying that shit, and I remember watching that press conference. I just ain't been having time to come on and just elaborate on what I'm thinking about it. But, like, bruh, why in the hell is Kawhi Leonard calling you out? Out of everybody on your team, Kawhi? <laughs> Hey, and the sad part about it, man, everybody thought I was just everybody thought I was just making shit up. 
man. It's clear as day. You you been right, bro. Like I told BJ, uh, you might have to send me a picture of your books and your bets, bro, because I might go ahead and put some money on the line too, man. Because this shit is I crazy. Got, how much you want right now? I got money. I got money. I got money on the Clippers preseason already. Oh yeah, yeah, that's big money. That ain't that ain't preseason betting. I already know that you don't spend some bread on that shit, boy. You mean? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think everybody at work though, BJ. <laughs> Y'all can still hear me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, jump on his road. Hey, this shit crazy, man. I'm hauling some shit. Uh, <clears throat> I'm hauling shit from the the port up here, Ohio, in Canada, for the for mm-hmm. the for the U.S. troops. They got this shit in containers on my trailer. <clears throat> they got this shit locked up, and it's going to uh, Jacksonville to get shipped to Puerto Rico to get it over to Haiti. Okay. Shit crazy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sean, so I, I want you to explain what's going on here. I got it on the screen right now. Uh, read it to me so I ain't got to hold my phone. I'm trying to Which one is it? So it's the first one. He said, when the Clippers don't win the championship, have my money ready, little hoe. And then you responded oh, is... <laughs> The best right, the Kawhi finish in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, the the, the best three hundred dollars that Kawhi finishes the playoffs. He says I bet. He says, uh, we, well, let let's put the foundation of the bet. The fact the found the fact the foundation of the argument started with Kawhi won't finish the playoffs. Now he's trying to claim that it was Kawhi and. Finish the playoffs and Clippers win the championship, but that wasn't the case. The bet was three hundred dollars that uh, Kawhi finishes the playoffs, no, no matter what. The, the Clippers go to the playoffs, Kawhi finishes the playoffs. In other words, he don't get home, he don't go home early because of the injury. That was a three hundred dollar bet. <clears throat> he's trying to backtrack because he looks like he's going to be wrong, and uh, uh, he wants to add on that the Clippers win the championship. Which, if if they add it on, that's fine. I've told him plenty of times, prove it in the audio. Because, see, you keep running your mouth, but you never can post audio how me and BJ post the audio. We catch uh, 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 Herm and Dookie and the others. We catch them speaking, right? We post the audio for people to listen. Not We don't talk. We do less talking and more posting. So I told him if he can post it, then I will own the bet. If he can't post it, it's a three hundred dollar bet. Well, he gets mad because obviously I've been called him out on Twitter. I said, "Hey, you and your fake source talking about Kawhi's out for you. Have you deleted that video yet? You might want to go delete that shit because you sound fucking retarded." Uh, so I blast him on Twitter. I, I put him on my Instagram stories before. He didn't reply to none of that so far. I don't know if he's done it in the past thirty minutes, but but he he wants to reply while I'm on the show with y'all saying, "Hey, make sure you have my money, right?" Um. So, and not only does he do that, but BJ, if you can put it on the screen where he, he he wants to trigger me into a racial conversation by calling me a white boy, then he calls me the N word. The very next message after he calls me a white boy, he he keeps pushing the, the white and the and, and the black into the conversation because he hopes I I, I will stoop and di- to his level and disrespect the the black community and disrespect people by using words. So they, then he can go back to his audio where he said, I used the word and say, see, I told y'all he used the word. But I'm not stupid enough to, to fall for his dumbass tactics. But it's a $300 bet that Kawhi will finish the playoffs for the Clippers. He's trying to add on to it. And while adding on to it, he's trying to bring racial war into it. And until, if he can't prove it, then I'm calling him out in the playoff times when, if, when Kawhi finishes the playoffs, I want my $300. And I'm going to call his ass out and – because what the way he's already trying to twist the bet and, and get racist with it, this, that, and the third, 
already tells me he's going to duck and dive. He can't even pay Grant, his editor, $500 that he owes to edit all his videos. So what the hell makes me think he's going to pay me 300 for a bet when he can't stand me because I call him out and, and he gets caught in line and, and, and bullshit all the time. So I don't expect him to pay the 300 Um but I'm a bigger man than him. So if Kawhi don't finish, I'll pay the 300 because I'm a grown-ass man. He's a little bitch boy. But uh, y'all can see on the screens if BJ's putting them up there. I'm driving. I'm not obviously holding the phone. Y'all can see where he keeps using white and black and and, and, and the other word that, that I won't bring up. Um, but y'all can, can see what the little, the little bitch boy is on. He's always been a bitch boy. He always will be a bitch boy. And he's he, he's uh, he, he's he, he's special. But I don't, I don't expect him to pay, but that's the bet, BJ. That's that's the full story of the bet. Yeah. And it actually all started, I want to say it was the same argument where I was calling him out for calling Jason Tatum the best small forward in the NBA. That, that's why that's the only reason he ever got mad. That's the only reason he ever got racist. Uh, because all that happened before we posted the audios. And all you do is check the dates of the, the time stamp. So he, uh, yeah, he's, he, he, he's, he's a fraud, man. He's a fraud, but you know that's the area we. That's already. That's the area we live in, though, Ted uh, BJ. We live in the area where if you lie, cheat, scam, rob, uh, and all that stuff, then you're a hero. Like Kodak Black, biggest fucking scammer in the Southeast United States, and he gets he and, and he he has how many fans? Like how, how are you fans of of a dude who's guilty of scamming innocent citizens of all their money? Now. Don't say what well, the government that <laughs> the government's a whole different concept, right? We talking about individuals going out their way to go hunt down a Taz, go hunt down a BJ, go hunt down a Thomas, go hunt down a, a Bruce, go hunt down a Hope, go hunt down people and scam y'all on the internet and hack your cash out, hack your bank accounts. This dude's a blown scammer. Like that's the area we live in, though. We we applaud people like that. So when we when people go on YouTube and they make up false lies saying their source. That, like their source is some fucking dude named Aaron Lakers fan, uh, the same name that, that fucking uh, uh, Herm tried to use, saying that that was their source. They're saying there's Aaron that works in the Clippers when he don't work for the Clippers, he's a fucking Lakers fan. And it, but but if you lie, scam, cheat, and, and, and buy followers and, and 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 make up fake narratives on YouTube, people follow you and and they listen to this shit. That's the area we live in. And in, in an eighties, nineties, seventies, sixties. It wouldn't you you would you would never had a follow never, but the, this area we live in is they they like drama, toxicity, they like, they, you know, they, like like go go watch Fox, Fox Sports and ESPN. What they talk about? Cowboys, Lakers, Lakers being a fucking Tennessee. In the eighties, if you was a Tennessee, you wouldn't even heard of, you wouldn't even talked about. In the two thousands, you're a Tennessee, you talked about. Like it's that's the area we live in. So these. These these fuck boys get all these followers and viewers and all this clout for fucking lying and scamming and robbing motherfuckers. But it but yeah. but but anyway. But you anyway, gonna say we <clears throat> Dad, what you gonna say, Taz? No, I was just about to say, man, he he not lying. And honestly, with all that that trolling shit, I honestly think they trying to be BJ, man, because it's. It's hard for a regular dude just to bring up a a four time coaching NBA champion and plus known well known reporters on the league, man. Like it Yeah. People, that, that ain't your average everyday shit. Yeah, exactly. I mean man. I, 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 I mean it, 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 we don't want to call out names because we do have people in the chat that's in the chat right now to actually go run and snitch when we speak on these people's names. Um uh, so 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 but but there's other people that's over there around them that's got buku's buku's thousands of followers, and until this day they still can't bring on a big name like Steve Kerr. So you tell me how they got all these. <laughs> then they try to say we got spikes off shorts. Okay, if you got spikes off shorts, then why do you make more shorts? Why ain't you the richest person on earth off shorts, right? Why 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 don't you make a million dollars off shorts like females make money off OnlyFans? Because all it is is shorts, right? That's how you get spikes. It's creating shorts, right? Then why then why ain't you like uh why ain't you like these these OnlyFans uh, uh millionaires getting get, getting money off, off off of this same shit that you claim right? But you ain't. So 
I mean, if OnlyFans, if females can make OnlyFans and get if they become millionaires and, and their net worth is on the internet, what the net worth is, why ain't your net worth on the internet? Because you're just buying a bowl bunch of shit. People coming over there, you got 400 people watching you, but you got 200,000 subscribers and you ain't got no, you ain't got Steve Kerr like Taz mentioned. You ain't got fucking Rob Park. You ain't got none of these motherfuckers on your show. But you, how did you get 200,000 followers then? All shorts. Nah, partner. You 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 can fool all these other people. You can't fool us. That shit don't work like that. Yeah, that 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 shit is wild, man. It that shit's fraudulent as hell. It, it's an era of like they used to say, keeping up with the Joneses, man. We can't, we can't exactly. Believe. There you go. That's exactly how you supposed to say it. Keeping up with the Joneses, man. Man, it, it it's sad because everybody want validation from somebody, and that's why I respect BJ because BJ out here doing his due diligence and just bringing us the news. Bringing us the updates on the league and bringing us updates on our team and showing us shit, and he not worried about his followers. He, he ain't worried about all that shit. I mean, of course he would like to get followers, but he ain't finna spend most of his time crying about that shit. Yeah, I know that one. Get the shit out the mud, man. Exactly. Get out the mud. <laughs> that's why I come but over here. See, that's the thing. When, when when you're a hip hop artist, male or female, they congratulate the ones that got it out the mud. Has anybody ever went around congratulating Beyonce, Jay-Z, and these people for buying followers? Then why the fuck are y'all over here watching YouTubers and buying followers? Yeah, y'all, y'all ain't watch y'all ain't watching fucking Rob Parker and Chris Boussard, man. Motherfuckers who built this podcast off they off of their name, got it out in the mud. They they built their shit. Y'all, y'all over there watching motherfuckers just buying shit. But yeah, you you only listen to artists who get it out in the mud. Like like y'all, y'all make Glorilla. Famous for getting it out in the mud. Why don't you make Gorilla famous? Why don't you go tell Gorilla to buy a bunch of flowers and, and then, you, then you make her famous? Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all no. congratulate motherfuckers who get it out in the mud. But then y'all turn around and watch YouTubers who buy shit. It's fraudulent as fuck. <laughs> it's shit, 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 shit funny as a motherfucker. Huh? <clears throat> I ain't never seen nothing like it. Yeah. It's a weird game we're living in, man. Yeah, we're, yeah we're here. We're gonna get ready to close it out here, fellas, man. Um, just everybody at work, and um, I think we got everything out today. Got a lot of stuff accomplished, so I'm gonna let y'all finish it off, and then I'm gonna end it when y'all done. Man, hell, I, I just wanna make sure they have my money, man. That's all I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, better yeah. have my money. Hey, I'm not worried about it too much, man. It's it's a lot of shit. You know that we could worry about in this world. And the last thing I'm gonna do is worry about basketball. But what I will tell a motherfucker is, is Kawhi Leonard is still the best player in the NBA and around the world to me, because uh, I just never seen nobody better. So if they want to count him out in the playoffs, even though he done shown time and time and time again that he's gonna rise to the occasion, damn near every single time he's there, then that's on them. Like like Sean just said, bitch, better have my money. That's all I gotta say, man. <laughs> salute BJ, salute Shy, salute to the chat. I'm out of here though. Yeah, it, it's it's really it's really that simple, man. Let's see y'all see y'all bitches in the playoffs. Y'all y'all been praying on the downfall all year. Keep praying. <laughs> Come playoff time, because you, 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 you gotta remember, y'all y- y- y'all praying with hate. We praying with love. Right. Our prayers gonna be answered. Y'all's ain't gonna be answered. Mm-hmm. 